Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Friday night and it's Tone Talk with Dave and Mark. Dave Friedman and Mark Uzanski. How are you? Dave, how's it going? It's going good. We got nothing better to do, so we're going to do Tone Talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I, my wife and uh, kids are all out. They have oh, lives. Oh, man, you're really... You're really <laughs> You are not maximizing this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I know. I know. I, but that's all right. It's been a lot of that, uh, this little, you know, trip. You not maximizing this opportunity. <laughs> oh, I hear, I, hear, I hear a screen. Is that you, Dave? I hear an echo. I know. I, but um, that's all right. It's been a lot of that. Uh, this little how is that impossible? You have to mute something. Oh, I hear, I, hear, I hear a screen. You, There's nothing on. Um, uh, you may want to close your video. You have to mute something. No, there's nothing. There's nothing on. Can you close the uh, the YouTube video? You want to close your video. You have to mute. Oh, there we go. So that doesn't work right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Tone Talk. <laughs> uh, slight technical difficulties. I see we've got 56 people watching on a Friday night or uh, maybe Saturday morning for some people. Um, and we've got a lot of people in the chat right now. So uh, I'm going to go jump in right away, if that's cool with you, Dave. Uh, that's good. I'm going to try to uh, finagle what I had going before and make it work right. So Okay. All you got to do is hit the mute button. Um, is there a mute on the video? Yeah. There's a there's right three away. buttons when you open got the video. It. Yeah. There you go. All right. Um, so we got Craig Lavender. Hello from Spokane. We got Sinner. What's going on, Sinner? Uh, Chad Allen. Craig Lavender, I said hello uh, before. Luke Kramer. How's it going? Um and Craig Lavender says, I've been playing my Phil X amp lately with new Celestian Celestri Redbacks. I haven't heard the Redbacks. Have you? It's, uh, it's like a 150 watt speaker or a hundred and some watts. I could wow. be wrong on that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I have. It actually sounds, they sound good. They're good. Huh. They're great for like, you know, one speaker applications that, uh, where you might blow up the speaker. <laughs> right. Yeah. One by 12, I would imagine. Yeah, exactly. So you can carry a small cabinet and, and, uh, you know, do it up. Oh, I'm going now. I got the live chat. So, there All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I showed technical Dave. difficulties for a second there. Guys, yeah, we, but we just had to work out the chat and on Dave's screen. So, um, all right. So I said hi to Luke Kramer. Um, and, uh, Lionel Hernandez. I, I'm, I know I'm butchering your name. I don't, I'm not going to pronounce it again. Um, Gear Addict 74. Hello from North Carolina. How's it going, man? And uh, Hernandez, uh, thanks again. I'm sorry I'm butchering your first name. Thomas Brino, how's it going, man? Luke Kramer. Uh, one minute past the hour and everyone's freaking out. I know. We, we were a few minutes late. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Scott MacArthur says he's checking in from vacation in Guatemala with his family. That's cool. Wait, you're watching the show from vacation? <laughs> I, said, really, I, I appreciate that. That's a dedicated viewer. <laughs> that is. Luckily, the internet in our Airbnb house and I can tune in. That's cool. You got the Wi-Fi cool. going. That's awesome. Um, Benjamin Thibadio. What's up, guys? Uh, Rick Hollis from Australia. So that's Saturday morning for you, bro. Hey, Rick. How are you? How's it going? Um, all right. So we got a first question here. Benjamin Fibidio. I know I'm not saying that right either. Dave, what is the best EVH one sounding amp that is bedroom level quiet? Hmm. Uh, well, probably one of mine, maybe. That's a good answer. Um, Kind of want to say the maybe maybe the uh, maybe the uh, pink taco amp maybe the uh, runt amp. Uh, pink taco is darker though. That's the only reason I maybe hesitate a little bit on that one. 
because um, that was kind of a very bright sound. So mm -hmm. uh, I can definitely say if you use the runt and use the Buxom Boost pedal with it, you can do whatever the heck you want with it then. You can really manipulate how the tone and, and probably dial in what you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I've got the runt. I know it, it can definitely get EVH sounds also. So, yeah. uh, and I mean, I can even get bedroom quiet with the BE. I mean, if you really want to talk about it, but. Oh, here's another one. Uh, uh, Lion, is it Lionel? Is it? <laughs> that's what I. That's the one I was butchering. Lionel or Lionel? Lionel? Yeah. Sorry, uh, Mr. Hernandez. How's that? Um, can 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 the uh, H9 be powered with the power grid? Yes, absolutely. Just use the cable that reverses the polarity. I do believe it's the blue cable, blue to end cable. Do I have a blue end cable in there, Mark? You do, and actually, uh, that's yeah. what it is. There you go. Yes, yep. it powers, and it powered marks. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, um, for people who want to see, I'm going to take my camera. Can you guys see that? So, all right. So, yeah. So, right there is the new pedal board from Freeman. That's the 15 by 30. Um, it's awesome board, Dave. It really is. It was so easy to set up, um, and the, you just use the blue connector for the H9. Yep. And it's and it's no problem. Yeah, because it's tip positive on the uh, even tide stuff. They've always been difficult with that. Mm. I but mean, now, I, I wish they would just get that straight. I, I, nine volt DC is not tip positive ever. <laughs> Are they the only ones who do that? Uh, mostly. There might be a few other uh, mistakes in there from a few companies, but like uh, it should be a two point one millimeter um, end, which it's a two point five, and it shouldn't be tip positive. It should be tip negative. Mm. So if you're listening, Eventide, why the hell do you do that? <laughs> Could there be any reason why? No. Oh, just to be difficult. To to be difficult, yeah. It's like Apple. <laughs> you got to use our adapters, right? Exactly, and we're going to change it every once in a while to see. Uh, um, Craig Lavender has a question. It says, uh, "Ask Dave what are the three variations of the small box fifty, and what are the differences?" Three variations. I guess there's the wild one, right? Uh, well, he said regular wildwood and deluxe. There, there is no deluxe. Yeah, there's a BE50 deluxe, which mm -hmm. is a totally different amp. There's only two versions of the small box. One's a Wildwood, and one is the regular small box. Uh, <clears throat> the Wildwood, what makes it different is the Wildwood one has a third um, channel, or so to speak, a um, a separate master. So there's three masters on the amplifier, and there's more gain on the third master, essentially. No gain control per se. It's just the standard channel one, two gain controls, but there's just a gain boost. It's basically like a saturation circuit that gets kicked in um, with uh, the other master. And other than that, it's pretty much the same. I think there might have been one slight voicing change I made on theirs. Now, how did Maybe that a come darker? How did that come about? They asked me to do something custom for them, just for their store. And so we've done a bunch of little custom things for their store. There might be some more stuff in the future, too. Uh, yeah, they, they've got a cool if store. They or, if they order enough of them, you know, we can do that for dealers, you know. Right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Well, it um, makes it unique, and it makes it something that they can sell that's unique to them, you know, mm -hmm. that no one, else, no one else gets. How Except limited it, were How limited were they? Uh, well, it's not really limited. It's ongoing. Um, they still they still buy them and they still hmm. sell them. So um, I see. So not limited, really. Just uh, 
You can only get it from Wildwood, though. You can only get it from Wildwood. That's what's the only limiting part. So. Right. Gotcha. Actually, in Europe, we sell a version at a couple stores like that. But in the U.S., you can only get that from Wildwood. Okay. Um, so we got Chlorine Bacon Skin. Great name. Wow, that's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> Great name. So I'm going for tube tones in a bedroom studio. What I'm thinking is using a reactive load into a DAW and into either a FRFR cab with IRs. Um, he said, is this how you guys would do it? So, well, for a, a bedroom studio for, I guess for playing in or recording in, I would imagine recording the F, FRFR is confusing me right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that would be something you want to hear the playback of, you know, to hear it. Um, I, I mean, if you, if you just to hear it, yeah. Yeah. just, just, uh, um, fix it. Let us know what the intentions are exactly. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, taking an amp into a, a uh, load box would be great, like a Sur load box or the uh, Fryet power power load. I think it's called. Mm -hmm. One of those would be great. Yep, yep. And then you can go right into your DAW, or um, if you have uh, IRs loaded on your computer, or you can actually use an, an out outside box like the uh, Sir Ace. Or... You use the Sir Ace or the uh, blue the blue box. Mm -hmm. um, I've, got, I've got the blue box. It's great. The, the blue box is really great. It's like some great IRs that were recorded and, and, and stored on it. And it works fantastic. Yep. It and is you don't very... have to deal with you know, latency with your computer or any kind of thing like that. Hmm. Does that happen a lot? Well, it depends. I mean, like, you know, depends on your computer and how low you can get your latency set, and it could. Okay. Um, so we had a bunch of questions actually from um, from Facebook that I I copied down. So I figured I'd ask you um, while we're here, which was a good time, right? Uh, let's see. Well, oh, better than when we're not here. Yeah, well, they, they, <laughs> they could they could be emailing you all separately. <laughs> you probably already have. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, okay, Matt Oliver wants to know if Friedman will ever be available through American Music Supply. They have their pedals, but no amps. So I said, sure, I'll ask. Uh, maybe eventually, yeah. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the status of that because I don't handle the sales part. So um, I know they have the pedals, but... Uh, yeah, I think I think eventually. Okay. Um, okay, so we've had this question from Aureline Jolly. Hey there, question for Dave. What is the most appropriate Friedman cabinet cabinet to go with the BE fifty in a home use context? Still a four by twelve or two by twelve or even a one by twelve? In my experience, 4x12s are nice with master volume amps at home, but I must confess I haven't tried any any other configuration side by side. What would you recommend, Dave? Well, honestly, if you have room for it, I'd say the 4x12. <laughs> yes. You know, like, you know, right there. There you go. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, personally, I, that, that's my favorite, uh, followed by the 212 probably. Yeah. And then, you know, if, but, I mean, it's taking up the same footprint. So if you put the amp on the 212, it's taking up the same footprint as the 412. So why not have four? <laughs> <laughs> it looks nicer, too. Yeah. And it just really does fill out the sound. There's just something about a 412. And then, of course, Absolutely. the way I have I have mine set up. Well, I don't even know if I told you I finally got it all set up, the wet, dry, wet. Oh, did you? Yeah. Cool. I'm using... I'm using um, and you can't see it. I got your boxes back there. Moss valve. I got a Moss valve power amp that I'm just using right now for yeah, temporary. And do I, is that fine? Do you think? It's totally fine. Okay. Yep. So that's powering up the uh, the wet cabs. I got your Friedman one by twelve, and then a two by twelve Meza. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's those are the wet cabs. Um, all right. So let's go to another question. Um, 
Oh, okay. Here's another one. He said, I purchased the Motor City Drive, and it's fantastic, and it seems to me it's rather unique. What was the inspiration behind it? And that, again, is Aureline Jolly. Um, kind of a, f it, it wasn't really designed to be like necessarily the sounds of my amps. It was kind of more meant to be kind of a fat tube overdrive that's a little more, kind of a little more like stoner rock sort of sounding, um, meaning like uh, Queens of the Stone Age or, or something like that. Um, it's really good. Put a 12 AT7 in it. That's really cool with that pedal. Um, it cleans it up some if you if you don't need all the gain that it has because it has quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but it it really opens it up a lot. So with the twelve eighty seven, it's really cool. Try it. Any particular brand or just doesn't matter. No, just like a JJ maybe twelve eighty seven or something that would be fine. Cool. As long as it's not too microphonic. All right, cool. Um, and I know he had one. He or she had um, one last question. Uh, who is the guitarist whose tone in real life impressed you the most, and why? And he said, "I suppose the answer is EVH, but if uh, if it is, who else?" The tone that, like, when I worked with him, or just in general. Tone. Uh, who is the guitarist whose tone in real life impressed Dave the most? I guess when in real life, so it could be who you worked with or you went to a concert, I guess. Or I, I mean, probably I saw a lot of concerts in in an era, you know, from nineteen eighty one through eighty seven. Saw a whole lot of concerts, like tons. Um through Detroit and and I saw everyone like everyone <laughs> <laughs> and um, well you know and then tickets it wasn't so bad you know tickets were like you know 15 to 18 dollars or 20 dollars max I know, oh my god you know it's it's like you could just you just yeah sure let's go okay 20 right. bucks uh, <clears throat> um, hmm. so there are a lot of good guitar tones in that era you know for like you know really well-known guitar tones uh, you know, I, I saw Van Halen 1984 tour. That was that was fantastic sounding. Mm. Um, you know, I saw Dokken in their heyday. You know, saw uh, um, Warren Demartini with Rat in, in the heyday. Jakey e. Lee, and there are a lot. There are a lot of good tones. Warren had a great tone in that era. Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen had a great, you know, killer live tone. Yeah, in '84. Um, I saw ACDC, too. That was great too. So, hmm. I, I saw Juice, Juice Priest, Iron Maiden, uh, just ev everyone. Wow. Now, this is before you were in the in the business, right? You're saying just as a yeah. Kid. This was when I was a kid. Yeah. This was yeah. like uh, my first concert was in 1981. I believe eighty one, and it was the uh, the Who it was the Who, it was the Eminence Front Tour. Oh, that's cool. Um, at the uh, now, uh, I think now fully torn down Pontiac Silverdome hmm. in Michigan, where the Lions used to play. That's a good first show. Yeah, it was like a hundred thousand people or something, or a seventy <laughs> to eighty thousand people. Yeah, I uh, my first show was Frank Zappa. Oh wow. <laughs> with uh, with Steve Vai on guitar and uh, oh. and uh, Terry Bozio on drums. Mm. So that, that was, was a good era. Yeah, I mean, I was like 13 years old. It was uh, the Shut Up and Play Your Guitar tour. Ah, uh, I I, re uh, I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, I it blew me away, but I I couldn't even comprehend what the hell was going on. It was. Oh no, no, and you still probably can't. No, no. <laughs> 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 exactly. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, yeah. So you know, all those were, you know, that whole era. All the bands I saw had great guitar tones. Was but just was there any one that just stands out where you were just like, my God, that's like the best guitar tone I've ever heard. You know, probably was Van Halen. Yeah, 
it's probably Van Halen, probably, uh, and Warren Martini probably. I always loved Warren's tone. Yeah. I really have, you know, recorded and live. I mean, I just saw him, I, first time I saw him live uh, just a few months back. And Actually, also Steve Stevens. Yeah. Whiplash Smile Tour with the I saw with the uh, the cult opening up. Hmm. And uh, the cult was fantastic. It was like a, two guitar players at the time in the cult. And that was the electric album. And they were just stomping. But then uh, but they but but see there's a common thread here. It's all the same thing. It's a vintage Plexi Marshall. Mm -hmm. So all th all three of them at the time were vintage marshals. You all three being Van Halen, Steve Stevens, and Warren D. Martini? Martini. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. there's the common yeah. thread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vintage Marshall. Yeah. Plexi. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, we got a question in the chat from Thomas Brino. He wants to know, with JJ Amps, does Jerry Cantrell have any tweaking done to them? Or are they stock? No, they're stock. They're the ones that we produce. Cool. Um, all right. Got your question there, Thomas. Um, Stelios has sent me a very long email. So I, I, I apologize, Stelios, if I can't get to all your questions because there were several of them, but I'll do my very best. Um, he's a musician based in London, and he's a big fan of the show, he said. Um, and he wants to know... Uh, he said they are about the Freeman Runt amp. As I'm interested in purchasing one, either a twenty or fifty, it's not easy to get a store and try them out here in the UK. And I would appreciate Dave's technical knowledge, if you, um, which you don't get from the guitar shops. Okay, first one: Are there any tonal differences between the Runt twenty and the Runt fifty apart from using different types of tubes, and one being higher wattage? Um, I think that the. The preamp is basically the same, but I think I changed one little thing in the 20 to behave better with its power section. So, uh, and obviously the clean channel on the run 50 is totally different than the 20s uh, clean channel. So uh, you should be able to try them out there. Um, guitar, guitar, peach guitars, um, Anderton's. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, G A K, Yak. Um, I think there's a couple others too. So, those are the main dealers. You should be able to try them out there for sure. Right. Okay. Um, well, if he can't, uh, we'll just take a couple more of his questions. He sound yeah. sound wise, is the Runt series closer to the small box or the B E one hundred? On both, there's there's almost no actual difference between the preamp section of, of the BE channel of the BE100 and the preamp section of the uh, small box. It's really mm -hmm. the differences more lie in the power section of the small box and the filtering that's in it, and uh, it's ever so slightly maybe fatter the small box. Mm -hmm. I think there's one capacitor value that's a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, and he says, sound-wise, is the Run series closer to the small box or the BE-100? I'd probably say the BE-100, but... Yeah, probably the BE-100, I would say, yeah. Um, all right, I want to pick one more because I don't want to cannibalize here, um, unless you're cool with answering his four other questions. I, well, I mean, what are they? Just... Oh, let's do, let's go. All right. How would Dave describe the character of the two channels in the run? Some reviews mentioned that channel one similar to a Fender style clean and channel two to a Marshall type. Yeah, the 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 the, the uh, clean channel is a, a basically a black face Fender style circuit, <clears throat> and the uh, dirty channel is my BE circuit, which is Marshall esque, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, we've got 149 people watching the show right now. Which wow, is awesome. just for the two of us? Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everybody on a Friday night, Saturday morning, whatever time it is your your way. Thanks for joining us. Um, 
Are the power and outpant, out, output transport, transformers in the runt custom USA made like the small box and BE100 or made overseas? Uh, the transformers are a different vendor. Um, not overseas, though. Um, it's a different vendor uh, 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 that actually made... To be honest, I mean, I think maybe the transformers in, in the runt series, I almost like the tone of even though they're actually like clones of the transformers that are in the small box i might actually like them even more hmm. it's like something that's a little bit special about those transformers just i, I mean it's the same but slightly airier sounding it's hard to hmm. explain when a b directly in the same amp was the reason to use uh, a different vendor just based Keep on the, the cost? cost out. Mm -hmm. That's what it was cost. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I'm aware that the runt uses PCB construction, which makes it more affordable, which is great. Is there any compromise in terms of tone or quality of construction because of this compared to the hand wired small box and BE 100 amps? Well, here, I'm going to be exactly honest here. In, in, in a lot of ways, the PC board is more consistent and more um, reliable than the actual hand-wired amp. Um, hand-wired amps, you have wires everywhere, right? And so, you know, wires, the way wires are routed, if they're slightly different from amp to amp, which of course they are because you can't do it exactly the same every amp. I mean, you can get close, but not exactly the same. That can cause differences, interactions, different things like that. And also, there's there's actually more human factor involved in it, which is this possibility of it not being perfect, you know. And uh, and you know the way we do the circuit boards and the runs are it's a very well made circuit board. It's really thick, double layer. Um, Played it through holes, and it's it's not like your cheap, junky circuit board. Mm. No, it's a great amp. It's a lot for the money, that's for sure. Which leads to the next question: um, Can you use the cab simulated X XLR output on the Runt Fifty without connecting it to its speaker load? And I know the answer is no. The answer is no, but you'd have to connect it to some sort of load, something. Right. Um, if not, how would Dave advise to connect it and keep it silent and, as there's no internal load like the Run 20? Just buy a, lo buy a load box. Yeah, get the sir. Um, okay, last question. All right. We, and um, have there been any revisions in the components used between the early Run models and the later ones? I read on the gear page. Um, first mistake uh, that Dave has modified <laughs> <laughs> and, and on what page on the gear page <laughs> <laughs> page 125 the uh, only thing yes I, I don't even, I already know what he's gonna say okay. um, there was some minor revisions on uh, we had a, a shield for the cab sim board that would that we had a little hum problem with the output transformer on the cab sim board so we got a mu metal shield and shielded it um, so that was um, um, what we did there and, and then I also shifted the loop levels a little bit so there was less uh, interaction um, with cabling uh, with the external loop uh, did it change the tone a little bit maybe a slight bit but uh, it's not really much in the main circuit no okay because he says that um, he read that you modify the design replace some components to make the amp sound warmer and thicker and well also making it... changing the loop sort of did that a little bit and also make it quieter when using the XLR cab sim output yeah 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 and so we cover that. <laughs> yeah, okay. If the amp is purchased in Europe and develops a noise issue, does Dave have an authorized repair shop that can do it under warranty? Uh, generally speaking, we'll work with someone there. It depends on where you're located. All right. And 99% well, of all repairs are just tubes, though. 
Most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. almost 90-some yeah. percent of the time, yeah. Yeah. All right, Stelios. Well, thanks for watching, man. Really appreciate you uh, asking these questions. Hopefully, you'll get an amp. Um, all right, let's get back to the chat here. Oh, no, actually, I forgot. There's some other questions here. Um, <laughs> uh, Matt Burtzwistle, he said, uh, this may have been explained previously, and I missed it. Can you ask Dave to explain what's going on circuit-wise in a load box versus an, an attenuator? Is combining an attenuator with a load, as the Aux UAD does, a massive advantage? Uh, no, I mean, it, the... Uh, um, is it a massive advantage? Um, a load's just a static load. Uh, uh, the the um, well, a reactive load, hopefully, um, which has reactive components in the circuit to simulate the frequency response curve of a speaker. Um, as far as uh, I mean, there's, yeah, like the aux has a has an attenuator basically built in. It's basically just not going all the way to load, and they're they're. And actually, I don't know what exactly they're doing in that unit. Um, it seems really cool though. <laughs> uh, as far as others, like a, a Fryad, a Fryad is actually a, the the uh, is actually a load and a tube power amp, so it's not an attenuator. It's actually like reamping the circuit. Um, Hmm. You mean like the power station? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not really attenuating the signal. It's actually just taking the signal, loading it all the way down, and then amplifying it with an amplifier. Hmm. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know where. Um, so I don't even know how to answer exactly what you're what you're asking. <laughs> okay. Is there any advantage or disadvantage? Not really, no. Right, I'd say the one just having some of these different boxes. Other than that, it does two things, you know. Right. Well, that's that's one advantage. But the mm -hmm. the Ox UAD also not only has a load and um, I think and an attenuator, but also has IRs built into it as well. And it's not IRs actually. It's a, a digital um, complete digital speaker simulation. Um, might not have termed that correctly. Uh, it's like a model of the speaker, uh, it, meaning down to everything, including the cone cry, and and how the speaker behaves at different power levels. Uh, so that's radically different than an IR. IR is a static sound; it, you can't change at what level the speaker is getting hit and how the tone changes. With it, with the UA, you can the aux. That's very interesting. So you can dial in cone cry. You can dial in how hard that speaker is being hit or not, and it changes the tone in like real time, just like a real speaker behaves. <laughs> so it's way more it's way more advanced and probably advantageous than just an IR. Yeah, it's a cool box. Yeah, totally cool. Um, okay. Here's another one from Guitar Garage. Uh, thanks for following the page. They just uh, followed the page recently. Do you pay any attention to coupling capacitor orientation or notice any difference whatsoever? Yeah, all our all the capacitors we use are the Synergy um, Royal Mustard Caps, and they are oriented, actually. So they're marked on which side is the, the foil side of the cap. And yes, we pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't notice much of a difference. That's a good question. <laughs> but we do it anyway. <laughs> because you think it's, it's the better way to go. I don't know. It, you might be hard-pressed to tell the difference, but uh, but we do it the way we're, it should be done. So gotcha. just follow, follow the rules, so to speak, on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mike Foss is in the chat. I'm back to the chat. So we got all through the Facebook questions, which is good. Um, so Mike Foss says, Tone Talk Rocks. Thanks, man. Thanks for uh, for watching. Jaden James. Hey, everyone. Thanks, man. Michael Bishop. 
and I'm way back in the chat, just so you know, guys. Um, let's see. Um, it's massively delayed audio signal, Mark. Yeah, I, that way I must be way back. Um, so 50 Flipside asked, Phantom guest tonight? Nope. Dave, <laughs> Dave is the guest tonight, actually. <laughs> we get to ask Dave all the questions tonight. Make Dave work. Um, I'm trying to follow the chat too. Now it's I'm way back there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why I, sometimes I, I highlight. I'll highlight a question. That way, if it jumps, I can go back and find the question that's highlighted, so I can find my way back. That's another trick. Here's one. Uh, thoughts on scumbag speakers? Scumbag speakers sound great. Uh, Jim's a friend of mine, and they they make a. Uh, they make some great speakers. Absolutely. Um, go buy some. They sound good. I like Celestians. I like Scumbacks. I like both. I've never tried them, but I've heard great things. Yeah, there's some. they have some really good models. It sounds good. Absolutely. I've known Jim a long time now. <clears throat> cool. cool. Um, Pedro Almeida asks, uh, thanks for asking the question here. Hey, Mark and Dave, cheers from Portugal. Just remembering that we want to see Dave play the guitar from Pete Thorne's Q and A. <laughs> All right, you'll see a video eventually. There is a video. There's a synergy video or something out there of me playing. Um, oh yeah. That was I was like in development or something, and it was a little snippet of me testing the Soldano module through, I think, a monitor on my bench here, like direct through a monitor. So, good. so what was your um, like? What's your style of playing guitar? Like, are you more rhythm? Or are you more of a lead player? Like, what's your? Uh, I'm not. I'm not much of a, a lead player. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. more more rhythm. Okay. Yeah. I've never been able to. I can't move. My fingers don't move that fast, so I just can't. Uh, I've never been able to really play lead extremely well. Slower lead, yeah, that's fine, but but not. Um, I'm more of a percussive ry rhythm player, more like a you know Steve Stevens style kind of percussiveness. Kind cool. Of. Like when you first get on the guitar, like are you more of a riff guy, like or are you playing? Yeah, chords? totally riff. I never play lead stuff. Yeah. So but is it more like more chord chord stuff or or riff stuff? Just curious. Both. Both. Yeah. A little okay. of both. All right. Cool. Um, Chris, hey Dave, is it possible to get a two? Uh, hey Dave, is it possible to get a two twelve that matches my dirty Shirley? Yeah, is, totally. Uh, you can you can you can custom order it with the dirty Shirley grill cloth and the logo. We've done it for a bunch of people. Okay. Um, metal T-shirts are coming, Chad. T-shirts are coming. We'll have them at Nam, and then oh. I'm going to announce at some point in time, sometime after Nam, I'm going to announce a, a, a new merch site that you guys can go to purchase the uh, t-shirts that's oh. un, uh, un, undecided where yet but <laughs> it's it's gonna happen that's awesome <clears throat> there'll be a couple t-shirt designs and then there'll be hoodies and there'll be eventually mugs and whatever else you guys want wow refrigerator uh, no refrigerators. Not not as of yet. Um, okay. But a flask. <laughs> right, that's what you. Friedman engraved black engraved flask. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Actually, I always wanted to do that. <laughs> that I don't use good. a flask at all, but I just it seemed cool. With the logo, I like the. Logo. Well, one time I'm sitting there and I see this laser catalog that that was down at the factory for laserable products. You know, and they we have a laser machine down there. And, mm -hmm. One of them was actually flasks <laughs> that you could, you know, come in different colors and you can laser etch the the stuff on them. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've never owned a flask, but hey, that would be fun. I would. <clears throat> well, doesn't the thing that um, Avi has that laser that that would do it, right? Yeah, except that it, that it can't do only his laser can only do uh, flat surfaces. It can't do curved surfaces. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So I don't think his will do it, but it can be done. Unless you find an actual real flat surface on the floor. Well, we could actually print 
print on it. That's doable because we have oh. also a UV printing machine that that can print. Uh, well, it can print a portrait on it if you want. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> get your face. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, um, we've got Metal Dad. I love that I name. I see that. Yeah, he's been on before, though. I think hasn't he? I think so. Yeah, he says love yeah. the show. Thanks, man. Um, John Osborne. Hey guys, uh, is that Ozzy? Just, just curious. Um, <laughs> That is his real name. Uh, hey, guys, I heard Lawrence Petros has a clone of the Dirty Shirley pedal. What do you think about that, Dave? I don't even know who that is. Hmm. Who is that? Lawrence Petros. I don't know. I can Google it. I mean, is it is it the guys that are just, you know, they, they clone everything? You know, it's not really... Uh, you know, a lot of the guys do clones and stuff and do, like, DIY, you know, clones of, of pedals out there. There's tons of those. and It looks, um, like he's, looks like he's selling stuff on Reverb. Oh, really? Yeah, the quote, an LPD, the LPD-87 is like having a dirty Shirley and BEOD in one box with better dynamic response and build quality. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it says that's what a customer is saying. But this is on his reverb um, ad. Mm. What, how does he label it? Uh, Lawrence Petros Design 87 to 2016 Black. And then uh, he's quoting a customer that says that's like the first thing that he says. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, that's not cool. Well, you know, take your chance and buy that if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, no, but you know, how do I like it? Well, I just found out about it, but uh, <clears throat> well, they just better not use the name, Friedman name. <laughs> Getting hot water. Yeah, well, I don't see that, but I'll send you the link so you can see it. It definitely has. Yeah, you'll see. Not cool. Either way. Um, but, but the picture of the product doesn't say anything. Like, you would look at it and not think Friedman at all. So mm. that's a good thing. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for bringing that to our attention, John. Or Ozzy, should I say. Uh, yeah, Chad, wear those shirts. Uh, so that's cool. They're going to be at NAM. Uh, Christian Utter says it's 4 a.m. and he can't sleep. Well, we're not going to help you unless we're really boring. <laughs> I don't know if this will be the most exciting show, but we'll an actually have an opportunity to answer questions on it, uh, un unlike, uh, unlike many of the other shows where we can't get to any of your questions because there's too much talking. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they're good, good stories generally. So. Yeah. No, we've had some – you know, thinking just back on the show, I mean, this, this is our 18th episode this year. The show's about eight months old. Um, we've had a lot of great episodes. Oh yeah, many yeah. more to come too. We got guys. We got some stuff lined up for you, boy. Oh yeah, beginning, beginning of the year. Good stuff. Good stuff. In addition to Nam. Yep. Um. All right. So let's see. Uh, Here's one from Okay, uh, Tony D. Um, SS100. He, uh, I have an SS100 with 606s. Uh, where'd you get that? Uh, yes, you can just throw in an EL34s and rebias because that's all I did for the 6L6s. <laughs> so, yeah. So you can throw 6L6s in a, in a Steve Stevens in? Sure. Or a BE or a small box or whatever you want. Really? I didn't realize that. You could put EO34s in a Dirty Shirley if you want. I don't recommend it, though. It doesn't sound that great that way. It sounds better, actually, with the 5881s, which I designed it for. What is What would the BE sound like with 6L6s in it? Uh, depends on what kind of 6L6s you want to put in it. Okay, so you got uh, some good it's, ones. It's... I mean, you can put 5881 power tubes in it, 606, 5881s. Uh, 
It sounds almost the same as EL-34s, to be honest, with those tubes. Mm. Uh, in fact, that was an option when EL-34s were shitting the bed. <laughs> uh, I was getting really close to going, ah, screw this. Just getting 5881s. I mean, that's what we use in the Shirley, so and they, and people love that. So, and you say, uh, Yeah, I remember you saying that Tatome was minimal. Uh, it, it was minimal. Surprisingly, yes. Okay. Um, Interesting. So if you rebias it, what are you going to rebias it at for the 6L6s? Uh, around 35 milliamps a tube, probably. So like the same thing? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Um, all right, let's see what else we got. Uh, Stephen Witt, been listening for a while, first time watching live, be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Come don't, to the wrong show. Yeah, there's no uh, pro, no prostate exams here. Jonathan DiCarlo. I binge watched six episodes in Mexico last week on vacation. Wow. Six episodes. Did you watch your entire vacation? <laughs> I mean, six episodes of our show, that's like four, four hours an episode. Wow. Yeah, you spent the whole day. Holy crap. That's 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 great. Thank you. Um, yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you did anything else on vacation, but <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, hey, guys, take your vacation if you're on vacation. Jeez, <laughs> I know. I, I've been on vacation this this past week, and I've really been maximizing it. It's been great. Good. Yeah. yeah. Nice warm weather, sitting by your pool. Yeah. It, it, today was just beautiful. I mean, it just the weather got down to like. 65 in the morning it was just it was awesome you know you do you realize that you're pissing everyone off right i know i know but that's why right now who, who are freezing their balls off well that's why i live in florida literally <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because there's a couple guys here who are from florida also the 50 flip side is from north palm beach i see uh diana diego is from tampa bay and then another person, Todd Flowers, is from Palmetto, Florida, which is close. That's like Miami. Mm. So, yeah, I got some Florida Florida people. Um, so they're not mad at me, but most of everybody else is. I know that. So what's the weather by you in L.A.? Yeah, yesterday it was 84. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that, that was kind of a weird one that it was that high. Um, generally speaking at this time of the year, and I think most of the rest of this month, it's going to be around 70 during the day. Last year, Nam was brutal, cold and rainy. Well, the, well I don't Remember think, that? I don't think it's going to rain. Well, I hope not. You know, they said it might rain Monday here, but that's, I, and uh, I keep looking and there's no rain anywhere. It, it, in fact, it, it rained for like 10 minutes on the way home somewhere the other day. I'm like, oh, my God, look, it's raining. I can't remember the last time that happened. I even called someone and said, hey, you know, it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, I literally can't remember when it rained last. Um, and, uh, yeah, that lasted for uh, all of like five, ten minutes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> And while I was on the phone with the guy, it was like, in fact, it was Dave Black. I was on the phone with him, and I go, oh, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was done. That was it. <laughs> That's it. That's funny. Um, it's been about two weeks, two and a half weeks here in South Florida without rain, which is unusual. Um, are the fires still going on in L.A.? Uh yeah, you know what? To be honest, I don't know. Mm. Uh, okay. I, last I heard, the Thomas fire was still burning. Um, I don't know where it's at. Actually, I haven't paid attention. Uh, it's funny. It, the new, you know, it's it's so prevalent in the news for a while, and then it starts tapering off, and then you're like, did it go out? Is it over with? Is it done? Is it still burning? What's going on? <clears throat> it's kind of far away from me, so I don't. Right. I'm not paying yeah. attention. Good, I'm glad. I wonder if it'll be by uh, Nam by Anaheim. No, it was no. Okay, no, not that far. No, yeah. All right, cool. Not that we have to worry about anything like that. Uh, Terry Kennedy says, first one I turned tuned into live. Great show. 
Thanks. By the way, guys, um, tonight, first time, uh, that's one of the reasons why we're a little late. Um, I was trying to figure out how to put the watermark on the show. So if you guys look at the, f the bottom right corner of the video that you're watching, there's a subscribe button that by the tone little tone knob. So if you do it, if you if you <laughs> if you hover your mouse over, if you're watching this on a computer, if it's on a lap, if you're on a um, iPad or iPhone, it won't work. But if you're on your, you know, computer, um, you could hover your mouse over that and it'll add you to subscribe. So check it out. Subscribe button. Please do that. Um, so we've got a question here from Aaron Cram, Dave. Okay. Uh, curious if either of you have a solution for marking, identifying different guitars, and designating for alternate tunings as far as what strings, each string, pitch, etc. Marking the guitars? Or identifying different guitars and designated for alternate tunings. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I just remember... I I don't, I mean, if you're just talking about, hey, how do I know that this guitar has an alternate tuning on it, like one of my guitars is, uh, uh, most of the uh, touring guys put, um, on the side of the headstock, put a little uh, P-Touch labeling tape, and they'll label what the guitar is tuned to. If that's what you're asking, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not exactly sure. And, and uh, I see another question here, too, from... Center O, I think. Um, what's the best Friedman app for thrash metal? Depends on what style of thrash metal you're talking about. Old school, like Metallica style, or uh, newer stuff. Maybe a Butterslacks probably is the heaviest amp we have. Um, but a lot of that old school thrash stuff was more like a Marshall bass sort of tone. So like a... Uh, you know, you can get some of those tones out of a BE-100. Or you could take a, a Buxom Boost and add it to almost anything and probably also get the kind of tone you want or shape it with that pedal. That's really what it's sort of designed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you want it to be brighter and tighter and, uh, you know, you can almost shape any of the amps. You could shape a Dirty Shirley into doing it probably with that pedal. Well, I'll tell you, at least for me, with the BE-100, if you take that amp, you crank the gain on it, and then and go in the back and put that SAT switch on with the C45 switch, you know I mean, you're in serious metal territory. At that point, you have too much gain. Yeah, I mean, well, you don't have to crank the gain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. it's, but I mean, that's serious, you know, I mean, you could do thrash with that. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Yeah, what is that, by the way, that you, that that happens when you put that SAT switch on? It's a it's a, uh, a uh, clipping circuit that was um, sort of a clipping circuit that that sometimes Jose Arredondo used. I, personally, I I I don't even like that switch. Really. Uh, yeah, I mean, it serves a purpose and it gets a, to a certain tone, but I, that's not where I my head's at, really. Um, but a lot of people really like it, so it's kind of been sort of a, a thorn in my side in some ways because I put it on some amps and then people liked it and then it's like I can't take it off. Um, <laughs> um, although I, I prefer not to use it. but I like it. Um... You know what it is? It's not that I like using it all the time. I like having it mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, well, if I really want to go over the edge, I know the amp can go even further than it already has. You know, it already is. It can take it to like just serious balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it can, it can, it can, it can be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice option to have. It's a nice option, and it works really well. And. And, you know, we use that kind of circuit sort of on the Cantrell amp, and we use that on the Butterslacks amp. Mm. That's in there all the time on that amp. Um, because they liked it, so. Yeah. No. It, so I, I'm not, you know. But I, but I like more of a vintage Plexi sort of thing, so. 
that's that's me. So that's not everyone. So that's, yeah. that's why I make different amps and that's why I make different sounds to, I, I want to make what you want. You know, that's, I want to make what people are asking for. And if there's deficiencies in certain things over, over time, I generally correct them with what people are asking for, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like to listen. Well, it's good. What people have to say, so they, they get what they want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it should be. I mean, as a, it's, a, you know, you, you're, you're getting market research feedback from your. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's it. It just, just cause just because I want a single channel amp doesn't mean everyone wants a single channel amp. Um, right. You know, but uh, that's why I make all the different amps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With uh, my favorite ones being single channel amps. Yeah, I mean, everybody's different. You know, I like having versatility. I like having a couple different channels. That you know, but. I, for me, the the B is like the ultimate amp. But you know, it's funny the um, when you put that SAT switch on, it gets very. It's like compressed. It, 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 yeah, it sounds almost like almost like the EVH amp that I have over there. Mm -hmm. um, get you know, it, it gets more in that range of those amps with yeah. that much gain in the way they're compressed. Is that kind of where you would you agree with that or or no? Yeah. Sure, okay. sure, right. it, 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 it does. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, I mean, it's a good sound. It's, it's not, not, not a bad sound. It's just not something I particularly use. Right, yeah, I got um, uh, But it can be great, so. No, it's great. It's, it's good stuff. Switch away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a, uh, I got one, I, one question here. This is a good uh, one. Uh, Rick seven seven one six one two. Hi from Italy. That thanks for joining us ter from Italy. Terry Kennedy. Now that Carvin is gone, any chance of working with Steve Vai to develop a signature amp? I don't know. We'll sh we shall sh we shall see. Hmm. Couldn't talk there for a minute. That's all right. When I'm, Steve not, I'm, I'm not even drinking it, I can't talk. So. <laughs> maybe that. Maybe that's the problem. I need a drink. <laughs> Uh, it would, I, probably um, not. A, not after the stomach bug I had. No. I'm oh good. yeah. Well, you know, what? I just I ate too much tonight, or today I ate too much. So there's this amazing Mexican place that opened up. Uh, I don't know, about twenty minutes away from me. Uh, like totally authentic tacos and burritos and everything, which you don't really get here in Florida. I mean, yeah, you get that, too, really. Yeah, I mean, you get that where you where you're at. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, but where we're at, it's just you know Taco Bell. So, yeah. so these are great. I've been like loving it. So, um, but I ate oh, too cool. much. Um, Mantra Sky, Dave, you build the best amps. Hello, Mark. Well, that's a nice comment. Um, Thank you. Plexi um, oh, Plexico. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Plexico. That's where I'm at too. Okay. NOS components offer uh, value in terms of tone. Uh, they can. I wish you could get them. <laughs> That's the problem. You get NOS components, you put them in an amp, and, and well, you can't make more because um, you can't get the components. So the, the, the key is it, the key is making your amps sound like they have NOS components in them. So uh, which you can do. You can do. It's just you just have to tweak them in different ways to kind of coax that out of them. Okay. Well, I lost my I lost my way in the chat. Uh, let's see here. Um, and I even had it. Uh... Someone. Uh, Chlorine, I think is the name. Uh, uh, I've never seen that name before. Uh, would you recommend a dark amp with a telly or other bright guitars? Well, I guess it just depends on the kind of tone you're going for. If you, um, yeah, 
if you don't want it to be too bright, yes, maybe a darker amp. Yeah, that might work well. Or it depends on if you're shooting for uh, you know a bright jangly tone, then you might want it that bright. So that answers that one. Okay. Um, Brent Harmon says, "Who would you like to get on feature shows?" And then with that, we also have uh, Lee Zerwanka who says, can you guys get Mike Saldano or Jerry Cantrell? So I'll let you answer those, Dave, because I know we've got some pl plans for... Um... Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for Jerry. Could we? Potentially possible, but it sometimes comes with having to deal with management and things. Um, so maybe not uh, for Jerry, but we'll see. Uh, I could certainly ask him. As far as Mike Soldano, Mike is going to be on the show. That's already in the works here. So mm -hmm. um, stay tuned for when that is. But it's going to be soon. Awesome. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people who are coming down the line and, and are on the list for 2018. So, uh, and tell, one of my. Tell, you guys tell us who you want on the show. Yeah, you, you That's tell great. us. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, who would you who would you guys want to see on the show? And, and don't don't say Eddie Van Halen, please. <laughs> Just, that would be really nice, but I yeah, I, don't, I really don't think that's going to happen. So um, you can just leave that one out. Yeah. <clears throat> um, someone else here. Oh, someone said uh, dark Itachi. I think. Um, what do you think of, of a brown and a dark red color on an amp? I never liked black and gold. That would be cool on Friedman amp. But we can do whatever color you want. And the funny thing is I don't like black and gold either. <laughs> I, I think I've said that before on the show. It's like I hate black and gold, actually. Um, uh, I wish I wouldn't have done that, but... The problem is, is when I first started doing amps, we offered, I, I had silver panels like the Dirty Shirley is and um, black knobs and silver logo and and um, people kept asking, can, can you do black and gold? So right. <laughs> then it started off that like that and then it just kind of snowballed and now, well, now I'm stuck. But we do we'll do whatever color you want, actually. Panels, amp colors, whatever. I don't know if you've seen it. We've done a pink amp for Steve Stevens with white panels. We've done the BE50 in Japan with white panels with black knobs and white logo with white piping on the head box. That looks really cool. We do in the off-white color we do stuff. We can do black panels. We can do we can do almost anything you want. Mm -hmm. So let let us know. Custom order might be a little bit more money, but hey, speaking we're, of, we're, we're capable of doing that. Speaking of Steve Stevens, I mean that was a great, great little push for. Uh, you had, a, I mean, two great shows with pushes for Friedman, right? So you had uh, Foo Fighters on SNL. Well, Foo Fighters have given us more press than anyone ever on the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that. The amps were on the that TV show they had, and those amps were on the Kennedy Center Honors, and mm -hmm. and 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 you know, I probably owe them something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, um, the Kennedy and, Center Honors when when they, they were doing uh, the Zeppelin. Yeah, right? yeah, when, the amp, amp it's on like stage. the amps right there. The Foo Fighter amp, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and and then the the voice that was cool. That the that the pink amp was the star of the show there. Yeah, that was great. And they even announced Steve Stevens, which was cool. Normally they're like Billy Idol, you know, but they, if I remember correctly, I thought they said that, you know, and Guitar Extraordinaire or something like that, Steve Stevens. I think so, and but I think that has something to do... Um, I, I don't quote me on this, but I, I think I think Steve has some thing with Billy that that's... He's, he's generally billed on the marquees also when Billy Idol plays. Oh, good. Oh, that's the way it should be. <laughs> uh, oh, here, wait, here's one. Uh, J 
Jason Hobbs, hey Dave, would you consider making portholes on the first level of your freedom boards longer so cables can fit through better when using a pedal switcher? Um, I mean, they go all across that. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you are you using like super long jacks? Because most pedal switchers fit, and the jacks, if they're the short jacks, are with not even anywhere near the um, the holes. And I can't make many more of those holes because, or too much bigger, because it it structurally the structural integrity of it won't be uh, as strong. So yeah. So I guess the the short uh, answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, J John Parsons asks, who's the guest of the year? Who's been the guest of the year? Oh. That's a tough question. Hmm. Oh. The guest of the year. For me, it's, it, you know, everybody was great. I mean, we've had some awesome guests. I'm not going to downplay anybody. But if I had to pick one person, it probably would be Grover. Yeah, first, really? The hmm. first show. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's his, you know, his stories were great. I've gone back myself and listened to that show like four times. Yeah, the stories were great. Um, although the John Sir show was really popular. Oh, yeah, the John Sir show. With the Pete, two. Pete. Yeah, with Pete. Um, that, that was really popular. Uh, actually, I really, you know, that's, I don't make us pick. <laughs> it's true. It's tough. It's you know, tough. I really, I think the last James Brown show was fantastic too. Yeah. If you guys haven't watched, if you guys haven't watched that yet, watch that. That was a great one. Um, James is a great dude. Speaking yeah, of, that was that was great. You know, speaking of listening to your customers, he is a guy that I thought some of his ideas were really, really cool. Like very innovative. Mm -hmm. You know, just answers to people's questions. You know, or, or needs like the like the the battery little button that he has on top when the battery is in the the amp, in in the pedal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, someone should. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, there's some actually really like very simple, innovative things mm -hmm. that that are just like, oh yeah, duh. Just, yeah. Of course, that makes total sense. You know. But yeah, I mean, I, from from being a rig builder for years, I really appreciate actually some of the stuff that um, that he's done with the pedals. I think they're uh, they're quite cool. Yeah, and, he, and he's a great he's a great guy. So can't wait to hang out with him and Nam. Same here, same here. I really liked him a lot. Yeah, really good dude. Um, and I want to try some of his pedals in person. I, you know, or, or check them out. I want to hear. Really, they're good. Yeah, yeah, they're good. yeah. They're good stuff. Built like um, little tanks. Yeah, yeah, just really innovative designs and just, you know, I, I love that. I love, you know, and he's doing it in the USA. It's just good stuff, you know, like, it, and, and, and the thing that I also love is that, you know, it's competition for you, but yet it's, it's you know, it's all good. I mean, there's enough it's, to go. It's just not, you know, no, you know, here's how I look at that. You know, like, we have all these amp uh, designers and pedal designers and things on the show, and it's just, I don't. It doesn't bother. It does. I, it's not. I don't look at it as competition. Um, guitar players are going to buy what they like the sound of best. You know, or, or uh, they're they're still going to pick up what they want. Whatever they like the best is what they're going to buy. Right. Or they're going to try a bunch of stuff till they figure out what they like the best. Um, so. So, you know, if you like the Soldano SLO 100 more than my amp, then please buy a, a Soldano SLO 100 from Mike. Uh, if, you, if you like a Bogner more than mine, please buy a Bogner. Um, uh, buy, buy what you want to buy. Buy what you like, the tone of. I mean, think, I think that was what it comes down to ultimately. I don't look at it as competition. They're just peers that, that also, you know, are in the same um, – same business as I am, mm -hmm. and may the may the you know the best man win, so to speak. Right. You know. Just... Yeah, I mean that's good. It's a good way to look at it. I mean, I I personally, at least in my business, I'm very 
I'm competitive, you know? So I try to tone that down, but, um, but I, I, sometimes I'm like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but, but there's always, there's always some good product out there. You know, it's not, yeah. A bunch of great guitars out there. You know, we make guitars too. Okay. Uh, um, you know, heck I'd like to, I, I, it's funny. I've, I've been wanting an, a, a Soldano for a while. I've n I never actually owned a Soldano head. I always kind of wanted one. <laughs> and it's not, it's not my, my tone, but I respect the amp. It's I respect what Mike did. And I, I can't wait to have him on the show. It's going to be fun. I talked to him today. So awesome. That would be fantastic to have him on. And yeah, I've never the, tried. The coolest I've thing about one. Mike is Mike doesn't own a cell phone. Really? Never has. Wow. I just found out that, that out today, and I'm like, on, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He goes, that is? one day I might eventually have to when they just don't have landlines anymore. <laughs> Which wow. I go, yeah, maybe, right? <laughs> that is respectable because that means that is he does. totally respectable. I love it. Yeah. I mean, there was a time in my life when I did not have a cell phone. Right. I mean, there was one in mine too. I just can't remember. Yeah. You know, <laughs> somewhere in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my God. You had to use maps. These things, these, these for the young people out there, if there's any watching our show, there's these things They used to be called maps. <laughs> they were made of paper and they had like the streets on them and you had to follow them. Yeah. Um, no if, you didn't know, if you didn't know where you were going. Yeah. No navigation. Um, no navigation. In fact, in fact, if you go back before the internet, or really, there wasn't even. You know, internet comes out, and then their their you know MapQuest becomes available. So you know, at first, you can go on MapQuest, type your address, and print out a, a, yeah. a direction sheet. You know, for, I that. for MapQuest. Um, but you know, before that. It was just map maps. That's it. <laughs> Not an app. And you had to go maps. buy maps to in order to figure out like maps of the country. Uh, <laughs> you needed to, to figure it. out how to go from point A to point B. I hated it, and then fold them back up. Yeah, or Thomas guides. You just had this big full unfolded thing yeah. of paper. Oh, it was a mess. Yeah, so much easier now. Oh, it's amazing. It really. But, I mean, but so but, I, but here's what I fear. So. What if, let's just hypothetically say, not that this, you know, is going to happen, but hypothetically say something happens and, you know, something horrible catastrophe happens and there is no cell phone service anymore or anything like that. Mm -hmm. People are going to be walking around in circles not knowing what to do with themselves. I mean, they, one, they're not going to know what to do with themselves because they don't have, you know, Facebook tied to their face. <laughs> um, and number two, they're, no one's going to know how, how to get anywhere. And... Well, I guess the fact that they don't know anyone's phone number either doesn't matter because there won't be phones. But right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, you know, it used to you used to memorize phone numbers too of people that you called all the time, right? Well, yeah, yeah I did, I did, I, and I still I still remember a lot of my friends that have had the same numbers for a long time. I know I can just dial, right? But man, I couldn't tell you what my wife's phone number is. Wow, I really couldn't <laughs> because it's programmed in my it's phone, and, and, and yeah. it's, it's, you know, or any of my daughter's phone numbers. Wow, yeah, yeah, I, I just never son. memorized it because it was a time after you know, like having yeah. to memorize the number. I have no idea what my, my son's phone number is. See, so it's no. like, and and it's you know, more down that same path, and that's <laughs> crazy. Uh, you know, people forgot how to do things. It's like. How do I heat up food without a microwave? You know, um, there's this thing called a stove, and there's pots and pans, and there's an oven, <laughs> and there's uh, directions on how to cook. Yeah, something. and we, you know, the fun. We actually haven't had a microwave in our house for years. Um, right. We opted out of the microwave, and I don't know if that's the healthiest thing in the world for you. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I and, try to. Uh, I try to we, limit it. Opted out, and a couple times I've been thinking, oh, maybe we should get one again. 
And then I'm like, no, no, he's, you can heat up food other ways. I agree. Takes longer, but I mean, most of the time I'm just using. Better. I might just use a microwave just to like defrost something, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, none of that either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what me... do we got here? More stuff in the questions. Uh, Mark's B has someone drooling. Uh oh. What's uh, that? Oh, uh, Luke Kramer. Mark's white B has me drooling. Oh. All, of, <laughs> all of my amps and cabs are white. I need Mark's now. Oh, I, I bet you it. Mark would sell it to you for the right price. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, there's a price for everything. That's true. That's true. I mean, if now, I could... it might be a stupid price, but there's a price for everything. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it would have to be a stupid price to take it out of my hands right now. <laughs> Um, especially after what I've gone through to set it all up. Um, oh, here, I got some more here. Rick Hollis, difference in sound to your ears between different homage speaker cabinets. <sighs> um, you know, that's, that's sort of a tough one to really A, B, or listen to the differences of, um, in the past, I've 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 listened to some Marshall cabinets that were from the same era, that ha and from with the same era speakers too that were eight ohm vintage thirties or sixteen ohm vintage thirties, and to me the eight ohms want eight ohm vintage thirty cabs seemed like they had more mid range to them actually, um, and the sixteen ohm ones seemed a little like bigger sounding with a little more scoop in the mids, but. Um, but again, because you're not using the exact same cab with the same wiring and this, you know, the way to do that would be actually take a uh, frequency response curve of a cabinet, swap the speakers out, and then take the same frequency response curve of the other cabinet, which could be done, but man, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like 16. How's that? Okay. Except in our two twelve, I like eight on my two twelve. So, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Platts has a question. Can Dave give some details on the Gibson scale type Friedman guitars coming? Ooh, secret. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, uh, they are a set neck guitar, um, Gibson scale. They're not meant to be. Uh, Les Paul um, clones, meaning they're not meant to be like a classic Les Paul kind of guitar. Um, <clears throat> it's an arch, it's an arched top, but not some of the. Um, when I say it's so, you know, on a Les Paul, you have an arched top in the middle, and then it dips down, and then at the sides, it kind of comes up again. Mm -hmm. um, ours is like a straight arch across. So when you rest your arm on it it doesn't have kind of that sharp edge that a les paul has uh it's it's more comfortable um holding it and playing it mm -hmm. um the standard guitars um these are called metro d's by the way the standard guitars are available in a variety of colors with they're all maple capped guitars um the standard body wood is an interesting combination that we came up with. So it's a mahogany neck, but it's an alder body with a maple cap. Hmm. And that, that sounded ridiculously good. Just really punchy and, and, and cutting and, and uh, sounded just really alive and really cool combination. Sort of an accident that we tried that. And um, it was a happy accident because... I was just like, that's what it's going to be. Because, again, this guitar is not looking to be a Les Paul. Um, so it doesn't have to be built of the body woods that a Les Paul is. You can get it with a mahogany body, though. Um, like, there's going to be one at NAM, or at least we hope, <laughs> that uh, will be kind of more of a 59 look kind of mm -hmm. aged a little bit and uh, um, 
mahogany back, mahogany neck. You talking flamed? Yeah, yeah, flamed. Be flamed or quilt are options on the guitar, or well, you can also get a painted top, but it's it's it will still be maple underneath. So a, tra um, a translucent color. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So variety of colors. I mean, we're I mean for the show we're doing you know kind of a gold toppy look one. We're doing a kind of a blacked out black sort of more metal style guitar version one. We're doing um, you know a fifty nine looking one, and we're doing some other uh, other cool colors and different things. Uh, most of the ones at the Nam show will be un not aged. Uh, a couple of them will be aged. Hmm. Can't wait to see them. Yeah, they're, they're super cool. Actually, <laughs> they sound ridiculous. The, the 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 alder combination with the mahogany neck and the maple cap. What a combination! Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. I don't think it. I don't think it, yeah. that's There's so, nothing you know, I've heard that's built like well, that. Like, like more modern set neck guitars these days. You know, it's like the. A lot of companies are experimenting, like Kiesel and stuff, with all sorts of different body woods and and different uh, combinations of things. And and you know, if you if you take away the idea that you're not making a Les Paul, because frankly, if you want a Les Paul, you're going to buy a Les Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take that away and you're making something different and something really cool, yeah, win win. Yeah, it's unique. Yeah, and it sounds good. So that's good. Yep. Can't wait to see it. It's a single cut guitar. Um, uh, uh, you'll see it. It's, they're they're going to be really cool. And they're made by Grover. Yep. Yep. Made by awesome. Grover. Awesome. Um, Thomas Brino has a question about your Black Kramer. He wants to know what's up with the Black Kramer. I guess it's still for sale, right? It's for sale. It's a, a Black Kramer Pacer, uh, ma maple neck. Uh, the finish, the lacquer on the back has been dulled down a bit with the little steel wool kind of stuff, so it's a little more satiny on the back side of the neck. Um, that one is, I do believe, I'm not positive, but I do believe it's a maple body version, uh, not the poplar body version. Um, it's been fully set up. Uh, I'm just telling you everything I did to it. It's been fully set up. Uh, there was some, when I first got it, there were, the studs for the Floyd were loose, and the uh, there were some bridge parts on the Floyd that were mismatched and stuff. So I got that all fixed and replaced all that. Um, and uh, it's got Duncan pickups in it. It's got a custom custom, I think, and a stag mag, which is kind of a single coily humbucker thing that Duncan did. Uh, uh, to be honest, it could use a fret job. It has been crowned and dressed. Um, but the frets are pretty low. It's like a fretless wonder sort of thing. Still playable, still cool. But if you want bigger frets, you'd have to do that to it. Mm. That's Very the story cool. on that. It's an old, old vintage Kramer, basically. Really cool right. neck. The, the Pacer Siri neck from that era were really cool. Yeah, it's a cool guitar. I know a couple yeah. people have been interested in that over the course of the show. Um, Email if, me if you're interested. I'll give you a price. Yeah. And your email again, Dave? Just so they have uh, freedmanamps at gmail.com. Okay. Um, Dark Latchy One has a question. What do you think about Alnico speakers, Celestian Blues? I love them. I think they're great speakers. But Celestian um, Blues sound amazing, especially uh, for that kind of semi, uh, kind of voxy tone, that semi broken up, uh, jangly uh, sort of cleaner tone. They're just they're nothing. It's a unique tone that. Uh, I associate it with Vox amps. Um, uh, That's a great speaker. Yeah, yeah, I, really cool. I, I had a uh, an AC30 at one time, but it didn't come with the Celestian Blue. I replaced it with I replaced the Celestian Blue in it, and it changed the amp completely. It was just amazing. After yeah. That. Um. So here's a good question. Mark Crockett asks, Mark, how did you and Dave meet? Thanks. Love the show. So um, I'll answer that. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, I, I have a version of it too. Okay, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll just put it really cut and dry. 
So okay. he, uh, uh, Mark was the co-host on uh, um, EVH Gear. What was it called at the time? Discussion. EVH, EVH Gear. Gear Discussion. And uh, they had me on the show um, once or twice, right? Twice. And, um, and then I heard Mark left the show, or Mark texted me, actually. He left the show. And and then we we, we talked and uh, after, and uh, essentially I'm like, well, maybe we should do a show. And um, because people had been asking me to do this stuff, kind of stuff for a while, and uh, I had the idea for a while, but I, I think as I put it to Mark, I go, okay, look, I can get people, I can you know be part of the show. But as far as uh, uh, you know, doing the technical side of it or wrangling, uh, making sure that the guests are ready to go and all that stuff, I, I just don't have the time in my day to do it. Uh, so if you want to do that, then let's do a show. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much, uh, that's how it started. That's how it started. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said yes. I was like, yeah. uh, and I literally was just on the heels of leaving another show, and I said, to Dave and you asked me I was of course shocked surprised and really happy all at the same time <laughs> and I remember yeah. said, I said to you I was like are you sure you really want to do this um, because I you know I, I was ready to just to be out of it and not be doing this you know um, yeah. at least at that point and uh, so I was really happy about it and uh, so the rest is history so yeah so here we go <laughs> <laughs> all good and stuff we're here. And we're here. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, and uh, and we're going to have some really good guests next year. So. Yeah. And the channel. More than growing. I probably think. More than I can actually think. I've actually thought of another one today too, that I'm going to ask too. Okay. What about Adrian Vandenberg? Oh man, I would love to have him on. I oh well, I'm going to ask him. So. And you also mentioned. Uh, uh, the guys from um, now the names totally uh, drawing a blank. The Leo from um, Stone Temple Pilots. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna ask them too, but we'll see. Yeah, you that's know. a tough one. Yeah. Well, you just ask, and if they're willing to do it, then the, the, we go for it. You know, if they're not, yeah. you know, I I mean, I know these guys. I know a, a whole ton of people. So, um, in fact, I know more people than I think I do. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about them. We could do that. Right. <laughs> it's got to go through um, the Rolodex. Yeah. So let's see. What do we got here? Uh, oh, wow. Did Dave coach the New York Jets a few years ago? You know, I hate football, so no. <laughs> now, if you, now, now, if you would have said a hockey team, maybe I'd say yes. But um, I was a hockey guy growing up. Baseball and hockey. Mm. <clears throat> Played both of them. Um. Jew, white, Canada. Jason Hobbs says hi from McMurray, Alberta, Canada. I bet it's cold there. Oh, man. That's got to be brutal. Um, tips. Uh, Stephen Witt. Uh, uh, yeah, Witt. Uh, I feel like every time I make a pedal board, it always looks messy. Yeah, I do too, actually, even though I do it professionally. <laughs> uh, um. I'm always like getting anal retentive and trying to make them neater and neater, neater and neater and neater and, uh, um, or, or Jamie, the, the guy that actually helps me do some of the stuff. Uh, um, same with him. Um, Pete's was really neat. That was really neat. Yeah. Probably I mean, could have been neater, you know? Really? Uh, I mean, I yeah. I'm, yeah. It depends cool. on who's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I probably do it ever so slightly neater than than Jamie does it, but um, you know, after a while though, see, here's the thing about doing paying to have the board done. There's there's a certain um, we cost a good amount of dollars an hour, right, to do it, and um, the thing is, is you want to get in and out with as little hours spent from us as possible to keep your your, your money down, you know? Mm -hmm. If we really pay extreme attention to getting it extremely neat, 
the you know the the the, the price shows for it if you you know if you want detail really detailed labeling boy that can take a a whole ton of time in itself you know so yeah you always have to remember that so i'm I'm always kind of conscious of trying not to kill people with it you know and uh so there's there's kind of a fine line you have to go with neat and without going too far where it's going to scare them I'm just curious, since you were talking about, I mean, if you don't want to discuss it, that's fine. But what is, what is, something, like that, yeah, what is something like that cost? Pete's board. Um, uh, well, let me give you an idea how many hours was spent on Pete's board. Mm-hmm. So Pete's board probably took, uh, I don't uh, tend to remember the exact number. Um, I think with all the extreme labeling that we did on his, uh, it kind of came in at like 26 hours. Wow. Something. I mean, that's starting from nothing, you know, and, and you, you build every cable. Mm-hmm. It's all cut to length and done. And, you know, sometimes labeling alone can take hours by itself, you know. But when all yeah. said and done, tested, and everything it was probably something around twenty six hours or twenty eight, yeah, somewhere around there. Hmm. But so, he he had a lot of stuff actually on the, crammed on that board, and it was like, he did. and also the tighter you make things, the harder it is for us to do the wiring um, and and make it all fit just right and tightly. Hmm. Um, so you know, that, so so to give you an idea, that's eighty dollars an hour. There you go. So, um, not cheap for that plus cabling and, and everything else. Um, not cheap, but not every board takes that long time either. You know, like this, this, there's plenty of boards that are, you know, like five pedal boards and they're, you know, four hours of time start to finish and, you know, six pedal oh, wow. boards and stuff. And, but the, you know, but when we do a board, you're taking, you know, you're taking the rubber off the bottom of the pedals, you're. You're cleaning the pe- bottom of the pedals off. Then you're applying dual lock Velcro to the bottom of the pedals. So even, you know, you're cleaning every pedal off, and you're and you're applying that, and you're getting them all prepped and ready. And you know that all takes time. It, it right. you know, and you know, funny thing, most people that put their pedal boards together or put something together, uh, in the end, are like, I should have just had you do it because it took me like. You know, you quoted me eight hours, but it took me like 16 or 20 to finally get it all right. And then I well, had this, to go fix all the cables I made and, and, and all that stuff. So, Well, this took me, I'm going to show you again, that took me to get that all set up and snaked and everything, um, I'd say about eight hours. Mm-hmm. But you already have pre-made pre-made cables and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so now, okay. So you had pre-made cables and all that stuff, and what did you use regular Velcro? Yes. Yeah. So you can kind of slap that kind of stuff together quick, but it still took you eight hours. You know, I could probably do it in four. Right. Um. But uh. But again, we're making custom cables for everything. You know. Custom cut to length, custom ends, and you know, it's a whole different. We're not using uh, you know solderless stuff or anything like that. Which, by the way, if you're using solderless stuff, it will fail. It will fail. Just it'll fail, and you won't know what cable it is. <laughs> so so when you luck. say when you say solderless, what do you what do you what do you mean? Like George L. Cable with the solderless ends, or oh, or okay. some of the um, Lava has some solderless. There's a bunch of different companies that have solderless stuff. Generally speaking, it will fail, or it'll partially fail. There'll be like a little buzz or something, and it's really just a ground of one of the cables isn't quite great, and 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 it will fail. <laughs> well, all my patch cables are Lava cables. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, they're soldered ones, all right, I assume. I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. That's cool. So That's here's cool. one Here's one from Edge19631. So is that like, were you born in 1963? But what's the one? Hmm. 
I don't know. <laughs> anyway, why was the naked discontinued? Naked didn't sell as well as the other amps, uh, so we I, we just stopped making it. That was early on um, when we were you know doing everything in a quite small fashion. Um, uh, could it be brought back? Yes, it could. Um, could I do a custom one? Yes, I could. Um, so so it's not totally dead. Mm. Um, Colding5150 says, since no other guests tonight, how about Mark play some riffs through the Friedman? Come on, Mark. <laughs> um, you know, I would, but uh, unfortunately, the sound from this Google Hangout thing is just horrible. It would not sound good. So... And just for that, I would, don't want to do it. But because um, I want, I want the amp to sound great. I would want, I would want to mic it up and really get a good sound. So maybe one one day during 2018, I'll figure out how to get it all set up, mic'd, and get a good sound, and we can do that one day. Um, so Chris Ham asked uh, Dave, since the Class Five is no longer made, have you ever thought about making a Marshall style five watt amp? Um, yeah, I was toying. I was toying with that a little bit. the The, the problem is, the, the the five watt one watt is actually easier than five watts. Um, believe it or not, um, the Marshall style like one watt power sections were were pretty cool. They're push pull power section. You can't do a uh, like kind of a single what's called a single ended one because it doesn't really sound good with this high gain kind of stuff. Um, will I ever do something like that? I might um, just uh, we'll wait and see. Might. Those Marshall those Marshall one waters sold. Those are cool. Yeah, and they sold really well. I mean, yeah, those are, yeah, yeah. We've been th we've, I've been tossing that around. That you know maybe maybe. And then Brian Gregory says, uh, no tequila and sushi tonight. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> look, look, on, on uh, Christmas Eve, I got a stomach flu, uh, which pretty much uh, I threw out my dinner and, and then later threw it up, what I did eat. Oh. And, <laughs> and then it didn't go any prettier from there, and so did my wife. Got oh. it, too. And oh, I, don't know what, I don't know what it was. It was a little bug. But, man, for... It's taken to about now, the end of the week, to really feel sort of normal again. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, no drinking. That doesn't sound good at all, right? Still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jim O'Brien's got a question. Uh, what does Dave think about how the UAD's version of the BE one hundred and Dirtly Shirley came, turned out? They turned out great. We were in, totally involved with those, so they they were. Uh, they were fantastic. It was great. You were totally involved, or you weren't? Uh, totally involved. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. They had schematics. They had amps. They had uh, everything. They were totally. We were totally involved with them, and and then I approved them. So. Yeah. So then, uh, I think I think they came out fantastic. Awesome. Um, three score ten. Hey guys, awesome! What a treat. Hey, I do have a question. What do you guys think about how the music in, in, instrument business is doing, like Carvin, Gibson, Guitar Center, et cetera? What are your thoughts? I have my thoughts. I'll let you go first, Dave. Uh, biz, uh, hmm. How is it doing? It, it's not doing as well as it once did, that's for sure. Um, um, it's... Uh, we don't see any effect of it. Uh, we're 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 doing well, um, but I think a lot of people aren't because of that. Um, and I really wish there'd be some cool new rock bands, you know, that would uh, kind of bring back uh, the guitar into the forefront a bit more. Um, but there is hope. We got Greta Van Fleet, which is cool cool band uh, mm -hmm. that, that is actually doing quite well um, but um, until some more of that happens I think it's going to be a slightly smaller industry than what it once was but I think it was almost 
artificially inflated at one point, you know, where it was just, um, I think there's going to be less, you know, a smaller pie to go around. So, you know, the best companies are going to uh, be eating up most of that pie, you know. Mm. At least it's my thoughts on it. I mean, we're not seeing a downturn in sales. We're 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 only on the upswing for for our own company. So, mm -hmm. which is great. I mean, that's awesome. And yeah, yeah and that's not really. I have a lot of friends that are are not doing well. You know, so um, at all, like. Uh, so I I really appreciate everyone that supports us and you know buys our stuff. I really do. And then we, we try to stand behind everything and be right there for you guys too. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough industry right now. Uh, it is for sure. I've seen small boutique guys who are, who are hurting. Um, and the big chain stores are hurting. Um, I mean, I went into guitar center a week ago and it was like before Christmas and it was dead. Mm -hmm. You know, when they should be rocking and rolling with business. And uh, it was, you know, five guys standing around doing nothing. And that's um, what's, you know, kids are too busy playing with their phones. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's too hard sad. to learn an instrument. And, and on top of that, also, my thought is that unfortunately, it, well, at least when it comes to retail, that the internet is just killing it. Yeah, I mean, if you're really going to buy something, almost anything these days, or at least at least in my world, uh, it's just kind of a click and and have it drop and your Amazon drops it at your door the next day. Yeah, uh, pretty sometimes that fast. So, um, you know, or or any of the you know like Sweetwaters or mm -hmm. uh, any of the online retailers. I mean. You know, you have return policies and stuff, and you get to try stuff in the you know privacy of your own home, and uh, I think that's that's great. You know, yeah, there's a lot. You know, and and the customer service from these places are great too. Um, yeah, you know, but you walk into Guitar Center or some of these places, and there's nobody to even help you. So I'm I'm not bad bashing Guitar Center. I mean, there's local places too that are. You know, even just mom and pop shops that I wish customer service would come back. So I think. I think to some extent the internet is just killing retail and there's a lot of competition out there too. And there's, I mean, it's just crazy how many guitar manufacturers amp manufacturers there are out there. And it just seems to be growing and growing and pedal manufacturers too. So, um, it's tough. It's a tough business. And, uh, I think you just have to put out the best product you can and, hope for the best and really do, you know, do smart marketing and be cutting edge in the, in your marketing and those types of things, which I think, you know, you guys, Friedman and boutique amps are, are on top of that stuff, you know, yeah, yeah social yeah. media and all of that stuff. I mean, that's the way you got to be. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, someone. Oh, uh, Deanna, Diego, Dave, what delays you do you use in your demos? Which demos exactly? All sorts of things over time. Um, 2290s, uh, uh, SDE 3000s, uh, different pedals. I, it depends on what demos specifically you're talking about. Um, and let's see what else here. Oh, is the B Deluxe only at Sweetwater? Uh, well, it was only at Sweetwater. Well, it still is only at Sweetwater until the 1st. And then their their exclusive for the U.S. is off and it's over with. So then it will be at other retailers also. Uh, and in Europe, it's available at other retailers now. The problem is just sh trying to ship enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll get there eventually. But, you know, it's like Sweetwater bought a lot. And then we had a few other people that bought in Europe and stuff. And so there's like a lot of them, a lot of them I've been testing. Awesome. So that's good. that's good news. It's probably uh, in, in two months. It's probably been several hundred of them that have been made. So, wow, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of constantly. That's all I'm testing. <laughs> that's great. That's great. A lot of demand. Um, I just want to uh, say hi to uh, Molly and uh, Craig Guitar Wannabe. Uh, those guys are in the chat too. Oh, uh, hey Molly. What's hey, up, Craig. guys? 
Um, Luke Kramer has a question. Hey, Dave, any hints for any new products that are going to be at NAM? I know that you you didn't want to uh, give too much too much away, but um, hints on new products. Well, I talked about the Metro D guitar already, mm -hmm. so that that would be at NAM. Also, our classic uh, our classic S guitar. Just more of a, a pick guard style strat, single coils, and uh, more of a vintage style bridge. Um, well, obviously, we know about the B50. That'll be at NAM. Um, well, the pickups be. I don't know. If the, 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 the pickups will be shown in NAM. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be. Um, there are two different pedals that are going to be shown, but. I'm not going to say what. Hmm. Um, no, I'm sorry. Three pedals that are going to be shown. Um, there's another um, monitor, something in the monitor series that's going to be shown. The full range monitor series that should be shown. Hmm. Um, oh, I don't know. All right, cool. That, kind of, that covers a lot of it. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, what else we got here? We got, uh, oh, uh, Hermes Costa. Do you guys think that two amps could be banned due to industry regulations on energy efficiency? What then? Vox is working on mini tube amps. Have you heard of that? You know, it's. It, hmm. I I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think they're going to be banned anytime in the near future. Um, uh, I doubt it. So, I, that's all I really can sort of say about that. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. let's hope not. Yeah, it's a lot of. Bad sounding amplifiers, though. <laughs> um, Did I tell you that I um I went to go see a Ozzy Osbourne tribute band? Oh no! Um, they were actually that could, music. That, were they good? Musically, it was pretty good. Um, but I, I kept thinking to myself, man, the tone on this guitar is just it's just not good. Now, Randy's tone was just never really that great anyway, because I don't know. It's just very I, – it's debatable, but I, I was never it's really – It was an interesting tone. Yeah, I wasn't really that thrilled with his tone. Um, the playing was amazing. But I was just like, okay. So I walked up to the stage to look at what the guy was playing for, through, and he was playing through um, two cube, uh, cube amps from um, the boss or rolling cubes. Yeah, and I was blues like, cubes. Yeah, no, not the blues cubes. They were like the um, so the other cube, the other cubes, like the cube sixty. What yeah, whatever, like a cube sixty or something. Yeah. And I was Good like, going, dude. <laughs> I was like, you want to talk about bad tone? That was bad. That was really bad, and it was yeah. so muffled. And I was just like, oh, dude, what are you thinking? Yeah, I yeah. mean, you're in your Randy Rhodes tribute band, which you're probably getting paid decent. To, to go do so you should have something yeah i was expecting play a play of 5150 you know the something cheap play of 5150 50 watt or something yeah you know at least that'll 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 be a better oh it was so bad yeah. the tone was brutal i was just yeah i won't go see them again because of that it was bad um all right so we got a question from mark hamstra and I don't know the answer to this. So it says, Dave, BE100 to sure reactive load to power amp to 4x12, what would you use for power amp? But, well, uh, okay, well, honestly, um, hmm. okay, so if you're going to do that, the sure reactive load mimics a, 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 a greenback cabinet for a load. Um, might if you're going to do loading down of an amp, it might not sound that great to do that with, depending on what power. If you use a two power amp, definitely it won't be that great. Um, 
it's sort of like you get double the impedance curve, sort of. Um, so it will seem bright, not quite right. Um, if you're going to do that kind of thing, you might want to consider the um, either using uh, what probably would be good is like an old H and A champ, or maybe insert an EQ between, so you can kind of tailor it a little bit. Um, old H and A champs are really flat amp, so that will actually kind of work with what we're talking about doing. Um, if you can't get that, I mean, um, you can use a tube power amp, but um, you probably need to use a different load, uh, maybe the the uh, Fryett power load, the new power load, because he has a variable impedance curves with the two little uh, switches he has, and you can kind of tailor the top end response um, uh, to better work with like a tube power. So. There's my two cents. Okay. Um, or, or do you, like even I think John Sir even said you can use you know put it put a graphic EQ in between and kind of mm -hmm. tweak down the top end a little bit and just dial it in so it's right with the power amp you're using. Um, let's here, see. here I got one here. Okay. Uh, oh, I got a couple actually. So. Uh, uh, Lazar's guitars uh, asked about um, how how would you how would you compare the Dirty Shirley to a Marshall JTM forty five reissue? Well, uh, the DNA in the power section is very similar, um, but I mean the Marshall JTM forty five has no master and no no gain, so you have to crank it to really get that kind of tone out of it. So it's kind of totally different on that point. Um, the Shirley will get that fat kind of tube um, rectified j 45 is sort of thing, but it's got a gain and a master, and you, you have control over what tone you're kind of going for with it. So that's how that compares with that. Um, and, and the transformers are better than the reissue j 45 transformers. They're kind of more like vintage, um, vintage style. And... Uh, uh, so, and then someone else, Joe Eller asked, uh, Dave, is Allison Chain's black gives way to blue a JJ amp? No, he didn't have any Friedman amps when he recorded that record. So, uh, no, that was a combination of all sorts of things. Uh, old Laney's and Bogner's and oranges and all sorts of stuff layered together. Um, so nope, sorry. Ladder records after that, the second next record had his amp on it. Uh, mixed with a few other amps, and I know they're working on another one now that he's using his stuff on. Um, Cheddar Kung Pao, Dave, do you recommend using IRs with the XLR out on the run? Uh, no, because the XLR out on the run is already cab emulated, so um, that would be kind of weird. Uh, you'd be better off at that point getting like a sur reactive load or something and uh, uh, pumping that into there um, and doing it. But you could, you, instead of using the XLR out, you could just use a load and then, right, and use a you load. Could, you could, yeah, you, or, or you could actually, if you had a line, like a, uh, I know sur makes one, uh, I probably should make one too. Uh, a sir line out box you could use off the amp. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. No. Um, hang on. Let me think about this for a second. If you took a sir line out box off the, um, not the use first jack on the runt, but the the second speaker jack, uh, you could feed the line out box, which and then in turn you could feed into your computer and then put an IR on in your computer. Don't use the use first jack because that disengages the load. If you use the other jack, the load is still active. Oh, I didn't know. Little I, tip. That's something new. Did not know yeah. that. Or, you know, maybe I should have put a, a cab sim bypass switch on it, but, you know. 
maybe down the road that'll happen. Hmm. That's a that's actually very... I could modify one to have a caption bypass switch. You'd still have your actual R then. That's an option too. I don't hmm. depends on where you're at. Um so I got a that question. Here. That. Yeah. Connect live says Dave, the fat switch on the B E fifty is very subtle. Like I have to listen very carefully to be able to hear any difference. What does it do exactly? Does it add more lower end and gain to the preamp? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the preamp, but it's not like the switch the fat switch on the um, BE one hundred. It's uh, that was after the first gain stage of the BE channel. This is after the um, second gain stage. Uh, it's a it just adds. A little fatness, not an overwhelming amount of bass. I often felt the fat switch on the B100 is is too much. Um, if you're using single coils, it's good. It's cool with single coils, but like to use it like kind of with a humbucker or something, it's almost it's too, too much. much. It's too much. So, yeah. so the the fat switch is a little more subtle on the on that, but it does add it does add a, a thickness sort of to it, not like an overwhelming amount of bass. But a thickness, but you do have the thump knob if you want to add even more bass. So, okay. Um, then we have a question from Fifty Flipside. Does Dave have an opinion on eminence speakers like Swamp Fang, Patriot, etc.? Uh, you know what? I haven't really used them very much. Although, you know, I've heard really nice results from uh, uh, Sean Tubbs is using uh, uh, a certain. Um, eminent speaker in his cabinets when he does his videos and uh, and I thought that sounded really good I don't know if it was the C C12 or something or s you have to ask him is he here tonight no it doesn't look like he's here no I haven't seen him um, he told me <laughs> because it sounded really good hmm. so uh, uh, but but in general in the past I haven't loved uh, eminent speakers that much they they have a quality to them I don't generally care for, but let's just say that I haven't like tried a lot of the newer ones. So, so I, I don't know. I, I don't really have a point to really because I'm already getting what I need from Celestion, and they're doing our own speaker too. So, oh yeah, what, what's the deal on that? Is that going to be at Nam? Did you yep. say that? That'll be at Nam too. Oh yeah. That's there good. should be a finished labeled one at NAM finally. And then they'll finally come out really shortly after NAM. So good. Very cool. Uh, David John Peckinpah. Looking to recap a vintage Marshall and a Fender, I have um, and wonder what Dave thinks the best caps are for each. Can you say that again? Because I I got distracted when I was reading something else. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Looking to recap a vintage Marshall and a Fender, and he wants to know what you think are the best caps. To the recap. filter caps, I assume you're talking about. Um, probably F and T caps would be your best choice for both. Uh, F and T, if it's a Marshall with can caps, F and T can caps. And if it's uh, the Fender, probably your best choice is F and T um axial caps for an old fender okay um brett asked do you have a favorite speaker uh our new one <laughs> <laughs> no I, I like a variety of uh celestians i like you know well broken in vintage 30s i like um i like uh uh, you know, greenbacks again, pretty well broken in if they're new. Mm -hmm. Um, like really well broken in. Um, the uh, the ones I have in the main cabinet I have here that I've used for years are, are like from the uh, mid 90s, uh, or early 90s actually. Uh, reissue greenbacks that existed then, they're slightly different than the ones later. Um, those are really cool. Um, I mean, cream backs are cool. Uh, the H, I, I think I like the H. Well, I like the M too. I like them both. H and the M, cream back. Um, 
the G12H anniversary speaker, um, G12H30 anniversary speaker that Cameron used to use were, were really pretty cool speakers for some stuff. So a lot of stuff. Just generally not 75 watt celestians. <laughs> Although I've heard those even sound good with certain amps. So um, I got some more here. I got a bunch here. So um, okay. let's see if I can knock out some of these. Uh, Dark Hitachi. I'm in for an amp around $1,500. So the Pink Taco or the Run 20. Can you tell me the difference? Um, play Hard Rock, Van Halen, ACDC. Um, and keep the gain low as possible and loud. Well, uh, okay, the Pink Taco is a little uh, squishier feeling of an amp, a little softer feeling. Uh, and it's a darker amp than the Runt 20. The Runt 20 is more percussive and brighter of an amp. Um, I would probably say for what you're saying you like to play, maybe the Runt 20. Hmm. Yeah, you could go either way, but when you say Van Halen, it's brighter. So I think the Runt 20 might be a little more percussive and a little bit more of what you would want out of it. Um, the funny thing is I can also make a Run 20 to be a little darker like the Pink Taco if need be. I remember I was talking to someone about that recently. So it depends on what you like. Um, both are cool amps. The, the power sections are a little different. Uh, the, the Run 20 power section is a little more like the bigger amps, and the Run 20 power section is no negative feedback, and it's a little different feeling of a power section. So that answers that one. Um, uh, someone asked, uh, David Mark, happy holidays. Question for Dave, getting the Friedman pedal board and the power that comes with it, enough for the H9? Yes, as shown on Mark's board. Uh, it is. Just use the appropriate blue cable, blue-ended cable. Uh Yes, I got a haircut. Uh, that's old news, though. <laughs> that's, it's actually getting long already. So, <laughs> might um, be time for a new one. Uh, I got one. Oh, load box here. Uh, Chris ha uh, Ham. Okay. Ham. Uh, I think AR IR sound great with digital amp sim. I don't really dig the tone still. I don't know about that, man. I, you know what? To be honest, uh, an IR compared to a mic, if it's done properly and 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 you're really comparing a, a similar thing, or if you've made your own IR of the cabinet that you're comparing it to that's mic'd up, which is really what you have to do, can be so close. To, I mean, in a blind test, you're going to be really hard to tell the difference. Now, the process that like UA is doing, like I was talking about earlier with the with the um, Oxbox, um, is probably even closer because it takes into consideration that you know cone cry and how hard you know you're um, you know how hard you're um, pushing the speaker. So that all kind of can come into play too. An IR is a static shot of a cabinet. That's why I say, like, if you make your own IR of your cabinet with your amp, you know, at the certain at a certain volume level, and, and you and you've you're compare that way. You're kind of comparing like apples to orange, you know, apples to apples. Then mm -hmm. if you're using someone else's total cabinet and total different IR, well, it's different than your cabinet anyway. So it's not this. How are you comparing it? And and Pete Thorne's done the same thing. He's done. We've done. We've done shootouts and stuff where we're like scratching our head, going, "I don't know. Maybe the IR is better." <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do, do, do. Well, Mark, you got one. So I'm, I'm yeah, Matthew Harrison. Now you may not 
be able to answer this or give a name, but he says, who has been your most challenging client that you've created a rig for and how did you satisfy their requests? Hmm. The most challenging client. That's it. That's it. Um, you know, hmm. I mean, they've all they've all had their little challenges over time. I'm just trying to think that the, the what was the most. Um, I mean, there were certain clients that were picky about certain things and wanted it done a certain way. Um, you know, like like Van Halen was had a certain way he wanted things done, and I kind of understood what that was and was able to accomplish what what he wanted in the rig. Um, uh, Steve Stevens was always a, a kind of a pleasure because he he could actually really tell you what he was looking for and tell you what was wrong with what he had. So <clears throat> he knows it from the technical side a little bit. So um, he could really, uh, uh, he's, he was always a great ear guy, you know, like if, if he liked it, it's like, okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. He hears things sometimes that humans don't. Normal human. <laughs> exactly. Now, when with Ed, when you started working with him, how did that come about? Because you, I know you met him when you were. I knew. I, I knew. Uh, I used to work with Matt Brook um, when he did uh, cartage for Andy Brower Studio Rentals back in the way back when I worked for Andy Brower Studio Rentals. So. Um, I knew him from way back then when he first got that job. So I was friends with Matt for, for years. But Ed had, you know, previous rigs before you got involved with him, he had used like Bradshaw and stuff like that, right? Or Bradshaw, yeah. And uh, um, and his tax studio tax a couple times and some different things. But finally that last Sammy tour in 2000 and I don't even remember. Two thousand four. Just two thousand four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they they came to me to to you know talk about putting a rig together. Gotcha. Was um, that the first um, wet dry wet rig that he was doing? Or no, was he... no, no. He was doing that way before that. Okay. He was doing that back. Uh, wet dry wet was uh, uh, yeah for. Um, no, not balance for um, I don't think balance. No, I think I think the f the first real wet dry wet thing was um, for the the fuck album mm. tour. Right, right. The, the PVs that were really three cabinet kind of deals. Before that, it was more of a stereo setup that he was using. Mm. Okay. Where you'd load down the amps in, in through the effects and then out through a stereo power amp. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, we see Walker67 says, got my Freeman 212 today. Cool. Cool, great. I got yeah. one here. Um uh can connect connect live i think um hi day uh, yeah i need the screen to be bigger <laughs> 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 or i need the print on the chat to be bigger or i need glasses One glasses i was gonna say you need uh uh well it doesn't help that uh, one of my eye i i have eye allergies and one eye um in particular is worse um, mm -hmm. And this was it's kind of acting up. So it's like then you're you're blurry because of that um, My b50 deluxe uh, went on standby when turning it off. I hear a weird sound like tube Glass or something stretching or something. Yeah, that's the uh, The eh eel 34s make that sound not to be alarmed. It's totally normal 
I don't know if it's like the metal inside. It just kind of, it sounds like it's stretching or <laughs> when you turn it on and when you turn it off both. Hmm. So don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, so we got a question. Um, what gauge speaker wire do you use in your cabinets? We are using um, uh, I want to say 10 gauge. Might be 12 gauge. It's been so long since I actually did it myself. I spec'd it out. <laughs> I think it's 12 gauge. Could be 10. Okay. It's some thick stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it works well. So um Jason Boone Bone asked live broadcast from NAM. We'll try. We will try. Um at the very least I will get video from from NAM and try to upload it maybe from the hotel, but I'm not sure if they're gonna have good good uh Wi-Fi and stuff there. Yeah, so we'll chance ch chances are um chances are probably not. So um we'll we'll see how that goes. But uh Oh, okay. you know, yeah. Maybe well, we can try. <laughs> yeah, we'll do our best. And if not, I mean, we'll get. I'll definitely get video of Nam and of the booth, and you know, us together and stuff like that. So we'll we'll do the best we can. Um, let's see. Uh, could you have Dave compare and contrast the small box and the BE50 Deluxe? I think we we already did that kind of right. I've done it before. I mean, I can do it really quick. Uh, basically, uh, the, the the small box is a, a simpler amplifier, um, less features. Obviously, you have the plexi channel, which you don't have on the BE50. On the BE50, you have a, a you know like the Bucks and Betty clean channel, which is super clean channel. As far as the BE channels go on each of the amps, you can dial them in to be very similar. Um, but then again, you also have the HBE channel. And a satch switch and, and some other features on the uh, uh, the B fifty, so that's a, that's a quick quick run through. So if you like a simple amp and you want that plexi channel, then get the small box. So both are cool amps. Okay. Um, Christo Alice remains A U S or Alice. Maybe that's for Australia. Uh, hey, guys, will Freeman Guitars be bringing out a humbucker, humbucker, vintage T relic with a Floyd Rose at all? That's a we, uh, Wait, hold on a minute. Oh, oh Dave had to go somewhere. Um so, <laughs> there's music playing. What's that music playing? I don't know what that is, but uh, hopefully it'll go off soon. So, um, while we're waiting for Dave to come back, I know that um, Roger Bale had a question. Dave, are your tube suppliers troubles all resolved? Great show, guys. Thanks. Um, no, I don't think his tube supplier troubles are all resolved, but I do know that he changed suppliers. At least for EL30. So. Hey. Hey, I got music. Yeah, what's that? What was that music? I don't know. Why did I do that? I don't know. You got up and the music started playing, playing out of iTunes. <laughs> it was the pause, everyone. It was the interlude. I meant to do that. <laughs> right here. You mean this? Oh, that's sweet. Floyd Rose, vintage tea. Super aged, this one. Yeah, nice. And the Humbucker Humbucker. Uh, humbucker P90 in this one, but yeah, you can do Humbucker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Humbucker P90. That's so even we, better. Already, we already do it. I like you that. Can, you can order it that way. That's sweet. <clears throat> yeah. um, the other question that we had from Roger Beal, he wanted to know, are your tube supplier troubles resolved? And I said that you switched tube suppliers for EL34s. Yes, we seem to be good. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Actually, I, I did find one bad one. But, yeah, it's doing pretty good so far. <laughs> 
Uh, good. That's good to hear. Scott Miller, meaning, love meaning one one failure in the field. So, oh, well, that's and, and for as many as we're shipping now, it's pretty good. So. That is good. Uh, love the show, guys. I'm out shoveling the snow in my driveway with my headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cold. I can feel the cold. Yeah, man. Uh, get inside. Warm up. Uh, Mark, my son likes the amps and the shield. Oh, cool. So does mine. <laughs> So we got uh, uh, Chlorine again uh, said, uh, any opinions on, well, he did KRS amps, but KSR amps. Uh, yeah, Kyle. Kyle's a good guy. Uh, he makes a cool amp. Um, in fact, uh, I, I and Kyle, if somehow you hear about this, I'm going to ask you to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, come on. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Um and then, uh, yeah, there, someone else, Luke Kramer, talked about, oh, man, I'd like to try a KSR Gemini. Yeah, those are cool amps. By the way, before David we... Kerr, David Kerr says here, Dave Black, the best of Detroit players. <laughs> nice. So, Dave, if you're listening, like you said you were going to, so there's some love, love for you here. There you go. And he likes to be called David. So, David Black. David Black. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, uh, you were talking about the line out box. Yeah. So Sir makes a line out box. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that because uh, the line out box that I got, so I could use, so I could do the wet dry, dry wet mm -hmm. for this. I got David Bray box. Oh, okay. I could have made you one too. I know. Well, you're busy, man. <laughs> 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 you're busy. So I was, you know, I got that thing shipped out in like two days, so it was no big deal. I, you know, it was like fifty bucks, so I didn't want to bother you for it. Um, Someone, uh, 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 Omar Mary, Omar Mary, uh, I, don't know, I don't know. Who learned for who? John Sir or Dave F? Well, you know, John was doing it before me, so I would say maybe I learned something from him, but probably most stuff from Bruce Eggnator. Hmm. Ice coffee tones. Um, Does Dave sell a pedal board switcher pedal for optional running in front of or in the loop of an amp? What are you asking exactly? Do I do I sell uh, a switch a switcher pedal for optional running in front of or in the loop of an amp? Not sure. Oh, I think I know what he's talking about. So, like a, a basically a, a pedal that. Um, so it, uh, there's some people out there that do a pedal for the side of a pedal board for, so they can um, it, you can make the pedal switch basically so you can use um, your post chain in front of the amp. Um, I can make custom things like that, but uh, you know honestly, you, you, with the buffer bay, uh, all you do is insert a little patch cable and and you're good to go. You just insert from out of your front end chain, insert to the end of the back end chain, and then come out the back end chain to the front of your amp, and you're good to go. So you don't really have to. And often little switches and things on like a little box with a little tiny switch on it are, tend to get broken. And uh, sometimes normaling of jacks also that you can do it that way, they tend to stop working. <laughs> so almost better with the patch cable to be honest hmm. and super um, easy. here's a good tip for people who are watching the show on playback and you say you see the show and it's three hours long and you're like man how am I gonna listen to this thing for three hours you have the option and Christian utter put this as well you can speed up the playback so if you want, you could put us at 1.5 speed, and we don't actually sound like chipmunks at that speed. Um, and you could actually get through it pretty, you know, pretty good. If you put it on two times speed, then we start sounding like chipmunks. Um, but if you like you can, chipmunks, it's okay. Yeah, if you like that. But it, but you can get through it twice as fast. So so it's it, it actually really helps. So the brain can still comprehend what everything that's being said. So. It's pretty wild if you want to do that. 
Um, Craig Lavender said, Dave, you don't get it. We love this stuff. It's better than a vacation for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Corey. Okay, go ahead. No, I, I don't really have something. I'm just reading. I'm sorry. Oh, Corey Clark says, just to clear the air, the LPD pedals are just another Plexi style pedal, not a clone of the DS or BE as far as I've ever heard. Okay. Yep. That's fine. Um, I just know what I read, which when I have that thing up, the first uh, comp. Lionel Hernandez, uh, Dave, my power grid is stripped threads. Not sure how that happened. Strip threads in the screws that go into the pedal board? Is that what you're saying? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. I've never heard of that either. Uh, how can I fix it? Um, email me, freedmanapps at gmail.com, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out uh, if we can get an RA for it or swap you out or, or do something. Might have a spare top laying around, actually, that I could probably send. Um, that, would, that would be good. So... Unless somebody got the wrong screws. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting. Um, I know the buffer bay that I got, the screws were in it already. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the power grid, the screws were not were not in it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So that Which is really kind of perplexing then why. Uh, it was stripped out because they don't even come in it. But maybe there was – I'm not sure. But just email me. We'll take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick Behar, Dave, why do Friedman, Kelly, and many other super strat guitar builders not put a tone knob on their guitars? Uh, well, I, you know, I was going – with the Cali, we were kind of going for the old um, the old Charvel thing, the history with Grover, you know. Um, you can order it with a tone knob if you like. Um, it can be done. Um, hmm. uh, I don't use a tone knob personally. Um, uh, and a lot of and a lot of the guys that were doing that kind of rock, um, you know, hard rock kind of stuff, don't use tone knobs generally. So I think that's why they wanted up wound up without tone knobs. Uh, you know, and you know, Van Halen's guitar have a tone knob, but he doesn't use it, and it's disconnected. You know, uh, I think it was just put there because a Fender wanted it there. Um, mm -hmm. But you can get it; you can get whatever you want. It's no problem. You know, we can do it. We have um, a tone knob on the Vintage S guitar, and we have tone knobs on the Vintage T guitar. So, just not the hot rod one. We got one question here. With two heads, can you run the loop send from one amp and return to the other? Sure. What would that do for you? Are you saying do you want to run something, put something in stereo with the two amps? That's what I, I think so. Or are you just saying you, if you want to do that, you can totally do that. You just take the other stereo output of the other thing and go to the just the return of the other amp, and it's just the power amp. Hmm. Yep. Sure. If that's what you're saying, if not, clarify. <laughs> um. Funny, I'm just reading all through all the people commenting on all the different concerts and stuff over time. Oh, I'm not even. I'm not even there yet. Um. The chat. The chat's so weird. Yeah, um, like it. It doesn't go in order or something. Sometimes I don't think. Yeah, like all of a sudden I'll just jump, and I'm like, where was I? Um. Let's see. Let's see what time we got. It's eleven thirty. Why don't we go like another fifteen minutes? Is that good for you? Well, let's see if we can get through some of this stuff. So, um, right. where can we buy a T-shirt? Uh, stay tuned. Watch our Facebook and stuff. Um, well, there's the frustrating clients one. <sighs> um, Do synergy modules in a pedal form. Um, Mike Allen, can we uh, expect, I think is what you meant, synergy modules in a pedal form. Um, good question. 
not at this moment, but uh, I guess the possibility might exist. I'm just kind of thinking about that now. And it's an interesting thought. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see on that one. Stay tuned. Okay. Um, Christian Utter, what did Dave do before Friedman Amps? Before Friedman Amps? Well, I've been building guitar rigs since 1990. So uh, I guess I've been putting rigs together for touring professionals since that time frame. Um, but the, the time frame exactly is I was 18 years old and went to work for Andy Brower Studio Rentals doing cartage, um, which is hauling studio musicians around to sessions, essentially, and setting up their rigs. Uh, during the time there, I got uh, uh, kind of introduced to rig building, and then eventually there was a guy that was doing it for them that left, and I started, I was like, I can do this. And I started taking over that part of it and then ladder went to work for a company called making music which was at the time a partner of Andy Brower and um, that was up until maybe 93 and then after that I was on my own and doing rigs full-time so um, but I saw all the development uh, I was there the day Bogner walked into the door. Reinhold Bogner walked into the door from Germany for the first time. I saw the development of, of all the early um, Fryat or VHT at the time equipment. I was around when Mike Soldano had his shop on Melrose uh, in in Hollywood, um, you know, in 1988. And, hmm. um, I got to know him then. Um, you know, I saw all the development of, you know, the bottom Bogner product line, the, 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 the you know, all the Eggnator product line I was involved with. Um, I was partners with Bruce at the time. Um, so, you know, all the, all the guitars too, like, you know, the Tom Anderson guitars and the Don Grosh guitars and, and, uh, you know, I had a lot to do with early Don Grosh guitars when he was first getting started, when he left Valley Arts guitar. Um, Speaking of Tom Anderson, so, I, call, I called him, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I left, I left a message to see if he wanted to come on the show. I haven't heard back. Hmm. But it's the holiday time, so I'll try back. Yeah. I'll, I'll, see him, I'll see him at NAMM, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, so that's the kind of storyline in my background, a, a real quick abridged version. <laughs> cool. Um, a lot of great stuff. Uh, so Gonzalo Cordova says, being an active uh, gig gigging artist, what do I have to do to become an a endorsed Friedman Amps artist? Uh, uh, send me an email and um, uh, let me know what you're doing and what's going on with you, and we'll go from there. There you go. Um, what which of your amps is closest to a JCM 800? I don't know. Did we answer that before? Uh, which of my amps was the JCM 800? Which closest it's, to? It's closest to a JCM 800. Maybe the hmm. I, part, part of me wants to say that the X amp because uh, it's uh, simple, but I, I don't know if that's totally correct. Um, there's modes on a BE100, uh, like in the lower gain modes on the structure switch, that you, you can get closer to an 800 sort of thing. Uh, I mean, there's even like elements on a Dirty Shirley that's a little more like an 800. Um, it just depends on nothing directly an 800, not exactly. Close, yes. Um, so, 
okay. answers that. So I got one from Ripley, Dave, Nick Johnson's tone using the Friedman line seems atypical. Is there anyone using a BE or DS in different ways or styles other than typically associated? Um, well, I'm sure there is. I don't know every what everyone's doing with them. Uh, I mean, Nick Nick's tone came from you know his um, he's a fantastic player, and he, he uh, his tone came from his uh, his hands, you know, and 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 the the single coil pickups that he uses in his particular Schechter guitars, I think, sound kind of unique. Um, uh, whatever the single coils are in the Schechter guitar, I'm not exactly sure. Um, uh, they're kind of a little hard sounding, but it kind of creates an interesting sort of tone. And then uh, Cheddar, uh, Cheddar Kung Pao, yeah, Nick, he saw Nick Johnson. Uh, you no, know, he said Nick Johnson's using Friedman. Nick Johnson was using Friedman. He has a BE100 and he has a Buxom Betty. And, um, well, frankly, he wanted a, a larger company that was sort of willing to support him um, with more clinics and different things like that than we were willing to do, just to put it plain and simple. Mm. Um, he also wanted us to do a, a signature amp with him and and I mean uh, I mean Nick's a phenomenal player but I'm not exactly sure he necessarily warrants a signature amp um, he didn't get a signature amp with Mesa he's using the, the crown <coughs> whatever that one is the crown <coughs> the newer one um <coughs> But uh, you know, I wish him all the well. It's great. There's no no hard feelings or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke Kramer has a question here. I don't know. Um, did you know the most recent periphery record was recorded with the Friedman BE model on the Axe FX? I was pleasantly surprised to hear it. I believe that because the, pretty much most everyone that uses an Axe FX uses the, the Friedman models in it. <laughs> Oh really? If, if it's a heavy guitar tone, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty like normal, yeah. So um, yeah, I knew that. He's also got a Friedman BE one hundred. Um. Uh. But then he has a lot of stuff. So. Mm. Uh, Andy seventeen KC, have you guys tried fifty five HZ or fifty five HC Greenback speakers? Yeah, but they they don't make new ones like that. Uh, well, hmm. well, let me take that back. They make some heritage ones that are like that. Old fifty five hertz greenbacks, vintage ones are fantastic. In fact, I like them better than seventy five hertz. I think they're really cool sounding. Um, I I got one. I'm trying to figure out what he's saying. Um, wait, where'd it go? <laughs> Oh, you lost How it. much VOC are in your plastic used for amp housings? I'm not even exactly sure what you're asking. In hmm. plastic used for amp housings, Michael Collins, if, if you're still listening, uh, can you clarify that question a little more? Um, Oh yeah, and, and then then Ripley underneath or T Crane, no T Crane said Nick Johnson's using the Mesa Triple Crown now. Yeah, that's the one. That's the name I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, this is timely. Also, what we were talking about earlier, Eric Davies asked for Dave current George Lynch relationship. Could you share a cool or positive story? He was here today. He has a story, but I, I, I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> I told Mark, but you, you're not going to get that out of me. No, I'm not saying a word. George is going to. George has agreed to come on the show, so he's going to be on the show. So you can ask him. Um, so you can you can ask him all sorts of stuff. He's got some good stories. It's good. So yep, um, you guys are you guys are. He talking. was here today. I, I was servicing a bunch of old uh, uh, plexi amps and an old park amp and some stuff. It's like 
totally down this path of vintage marshals again, which is cool. Good. He's got a ton um, of amps. Yeah, he does. Uh, I'm trying to figure out something here in the chat. Someone fill me in, or am I missing something, or is it just this is a get out of order here? Someone said, "Why the Pete Thorne hate?" I, am I? Yeah, um, I was going to talk to you about that afterward. We had to delete a few people because there were some uh, negative comments being made. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, um, Pete's a great dude, man. Leave him alone. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get that. Don't, don't be talking about Pete Thorne and on, on our yeah. show. That's for sure. You, you won't last very long here. Um, oh, bigoted jerk. Oh yeah, I can't wait to hear this story. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, yeah, they had to be deleted. RMG four seven one says, "Can you ask Dave if he has ever met or worked with Steve Carr?" I've heard really great things about his amps lately, and he seems very knowledgeable, very different market than Dave's amps. Yeah, totally different market. I mean, he makes some nice nice amps. Um, I haven't really played. I, I've heard a few of them sound really cool. I haven't really personally played any of them, uh, but, they, but they're pretty cool looking, and I think uh, I've seen the insides of some that he's shown at NAMM shows and stuff before, and I think they look really cool. So... Um, Man, I'd lo I'd love to actually hear one actually and like really play one actually. <laughs> That's hard to do though. I mean, unless you send it here into my shop, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, someone says Walmart Metal Dad is saying I seen Walmart selling the Run Twenty online. Well, not exactly. The 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 it's if you look, it's actually from another retailer. It's just it's on their shopping portal, sort of not hmm. actually from Walmart um, it's like it, it's it's like you know how like on Sears website some of the products come from not just Sears stores that comes from other stores now and, and and several websites are like that it's kind of just like a shopping portal so to speak but they don't get a cut do they I don't know what Walmart gets of that I have no no idea whatsoever hmm. weird I mean, they might get a cut, but it must be from the retailer that's that's putting it through them. Right, right, right. Maybe it's like that advertising. Oh. They get the fee for pushing it for them. Um, Corey Clark says, I just watched the premiere guitar rig uh, video for Animals as leaders, and Tosin Abasi is using the BEOD into a Morgan for his distorted sound now. It actually sounded fantastic. Uh, correct. He's. I think he's got two of them on his board, doesn't he? I think I saw that. Uh, yeah, Tosin loves it. It's. 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 That's his dirty tone. Hmm, that's awesome. Um, Row Camp Fifty Six. Dave, ever thought of just making a power amp? I don't. Yeah, but like a rack mount power amp. Are you talking? Um, I, I. I don't think there's a market for it. Um. Sure, have I thought about it? Yes, but um, I think the market ended for that like years ago. And I don't really, I don't really see the 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 market. So, okay. Uh, what brand of twelve AX sevens do you use in your amps, Dave? John Parsons asks. Uh, JJ in the very first slots for the low microphonics that they offer. Not necessarily the absolute best sounding. Um, they sound good, but in big production, you have to kind of go with what works the best. Um, and uh, and Chinese 12AX7s in the rest of the amp, which are really probably the best 12AX7s made today, but they are not low microphonic, so they can't be used in the first slots. If you were to replace the, uh, the JJ... Um, with something. with something else that I like better. Yeah. Uh, you could try the the tongue sole um, in the first slots of my amps. Those sound really good. Um, I've got a few tongue the, soles. The uh, the um, if they're if they're behaving themselves in microphonics. Mm -hmm. um, the new Mullard CV four thousand or four thousand one or whatever it is. Um, that, that tube sounds kind of cool in the first slots also. Um, 
Uh, you can also use, uh, you can get some uh, like Ruby branded Chinese ones that m the HG plus, uh, I don't recall the rest, HC5, HG plus or something. Um, that is a Chinese tube that is made for lower noise. Um, but it's still somewhat of a crapshoot. Uh, but those actually sound good um, in those slots. Um, you can try a bunch of stuff. I mean, if you can live with a little bit of the microphonics, as long as it doesn't feed back on itself, that that that's okay too. Mm -hmm. You know, just eventually microphonics will eventually get where the tube just feeds back on its own <laughs> and makes a noise, and that's what that's what you don't want to get to. So basically, you're just going to start getting squealing noise, basically. Yeah, it's like it's feeding back, but okay. you're not playing through it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, not good. Uh, yeah, that, that's when it's extremely microphonic. If it's a little microphonic, like if you tap on the app and it pings a little bit, it's not. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean it. It will actually go as far any further, even. Um, so you can get away with some stuff, you know. Okay. Um, three score ten. Bring George Metropolis back to do another show. Sure. Yeah. Love to have, love to have George back. <clears throat> um, Joe Hall, awesome show, guys. Dave, what is the difference in tone between the EL thirty fours and sixty five fifties? Uh, EL thirty fours are kind of a softer sounding tube. Um. Uh, with kind of a more mid-range bass sort of tone. 6550 is kind of a bigger, harder toned tube, uh, bigger sounding sort of, um, sometimes too stiff, but also depends on what specific brand of 6550 that we're talking about. Uh, I know Ruby has one certain Chinese 6550 that sounds really good in guitar amps um, that I, I kind of like. There you go. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, going to add a – this is Jonathan DiCarlo. Going to add a Buxom Boost to my pedal board, have a PT20, and thinking about adding a Synergy model to expand the rig. Any recommendations? On uh, what Synergy module to expand with what amp? A PT20. Well, I don't know. Just, well, I just, what do you want? Uh, yeah. Do you want a clean just... channel? Do you want a, a semi broken up channel? Do you want a voxy sounding thing? Um, it depends on what you want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm getting three of them. Yeah. Three I mean, the, the AC Morgan one for a voxy sounding thing sounds great. The, uh, you know, the, the different Fender ones, if you want to eat a clean channel, sound cool. Mm -hmm. The, um, How's a diesel one? Uh, the diesel one's cool. Yeah, it sounds like it it's sounds a super like super high gain. It's super high gain, really thick. Uh, what well, the sound diesel's known for? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, which is a, is a very thick tone. You know, often people think that those are kind of like metal amps, and I, I never quite, I never quite see them as metal amps. I think of them as really big, thick, fat power cord amps, but not like quick. They're not quick. They're a little sluggish if in, 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 in nature, but like big fat power cords, like in the back of a track or something, they sound, they sound huge. Mm -hmm. so. um, Eric Davies, why, why, why is the original 5150's crunch button not foot switchable? Can the button amp be modded, and have you done that or, or used that mod in the past? Mm, I don't mod them at all. Um, I've seen other people mod them, um, but it jumps in level, so you, you need like another master kind of tied into it. Way too hard to mod those original amps like that, the PVs. There's not a lot of room or space to do anything. Um. Let's see, uh, day, uh, well, you already said that you're not going to be giving the <laughs> Sean Sinclair any hints on the new pedals you're releasing. No, 
Uh, oh, God, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, it jumped around again, so now I'm lost. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Ice coffee uh, tones. Johan Sedgborn for live stream European vacation. Um, that guy's great. Uh, you ever hear that guy? Which guy? Johan Sedgborn. He has a YouTube channel. No, I don't think so. I don't think. Oh, maybe, but he does some really cool. You, I'll send you a, a video of his. He does some cool YouTube videos. Here's one from Vintage Thirty. Dave, have you ever experimented with any of the Fain speakers? Uh, uh, yes, actually, Stevie Fryett uh, showed me uh, the newer Fain speakers. I think the F70. Uh, and it's a fantastic sounding speaker. It's really, really great. Uh, maybe a little on the expensive side, but r really cool sounding speaker. I liked it a lot. Actually, I, I highly recommend those. Excellent. Um, cool. Let's see. Uh, what is Mark Cameron doing these days from Mr. Black? Um, I really don't know. I haven't really talked to Mark for a very long time. So um, I don't. I think he's up somewhere in Northern California area now. Um, from what I heard. Hmm. Uh, uh, Jay Bimler, any tips for a Marshall 2061X running BEOD and Dirty Shirley, Pe Dirty Shirley Pellows? Sounds great and covers a lot of tones. Thanks, Dave. No recommendations, really. It just if it sounds great, then you're good, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a cool, <laughs> that's a cool, that's a cool amp. I, I used to have the, the 2061. Um, it's a nice 20 watt amp. Uh, crank it, get ACDC all day. Yeah. Chad Allen says, best-selling Friedman amp. Um, well, hand-wired series or PC board? Do I eliminate the PC board amps? If I eliminate the PC board amps, probably the BE100. Uh, if I include PC board amps, the PC board amps sell more than anything. Um, and then the, the Dirty Shirley and the Small Box are like, kind of tied depending on what quarter we're talking so um some quarters one is higher than the other you know so um so that's that and uh, be 50 is selling really well so um that will probably take over the lead um in the sales at least judging from what the response has been so far okay Craig Guitar Wannabe, Dave, I'm retubing my 5152. What tubes do you recommend? I have a new set of Groove tubes. Maybe those? A new set of Groove tubes for? A 5152 head. Oh, um, 5152 heads. I like, um, well, maybe Groove tubes. Depends on what tubes they are. Um, they could be lots of stuff with Groove tubes. Personally, in a 5150 uh, the PV5150 or 5152, I actually like JJ tubes all across the whole thing. Um, JJ uh, 6L6s and JJ um, 12AX7s, all, all of them. Um, I think in that amp, it really works. And also biasing them properly in that amp, which you have to kind of mod to do. Um, Rocam 56 Dave, is there a main distributor in Canada for your products? Not a main distributor. We sell uh, direct. We don't have distributors per se. So we sell direct to stores and, and things there. Um, Guitar Effects Canada is one of the stores. Um, um, I don't go go on our website. We have a, a store locator, so you can find out um, where. The stuff is located. Oh, not quite thick over there. Okay. Uh, here's one. Uh, at Aaron Cram is a Friedman small box the best bet for Jimmy Page tone in a Friedman line. Hmm. Um. Maybe, maybe on the Plexi channel. Um. But then again, the Dirty Shirley might do some of that also, depending on how you dial it in. So. 
And then Vinny the Lens says he just got one of the special run Friedman Cali Green Meanies. Uh, amazing, best guitar I've ever owned. Well, cool. It's good to see someone got one of those. That's great. You know, the funny thing is when when you first when you first look at it, you're like, oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> because you get the pink pickup and the mm. and the white and and you know and the green and and then as you sit there and stare at it for a while, you're like. Man, that's just kind of cool. <laughs> I love that guitar. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really cool. Literally, I first see it, you're like, "Oh, holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and then you're sitting there staring at, it and you're like, "On, yeah, fuck, I want one." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, the worst problem with making all the guitars, especially guitars, is um, uh, I see all the guitars that we we. We, we make a lot of the guitars. We, we come up with ideas for a lot of the guitars and then sell them to dealers. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in other words, we'll, you know, let's spec out another 12 guitars or let's spec out this. So it's like, Oh, we should try this or we should try that. And then we see how it sells. Um, so we, you know, we, we do, we just let our imaginations run wild a little bit. And, uh, the problem with that is when the cool ones come through, you're just like, Oh, I want that one. Wait a minute! I don't need another one. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. How many guitars do I need? Uh, I have two Friedman guitars now. I got another one. On the way. I didn't show you. Hold on. No, it's here. Oh yeah. Oh. So this is the other one that we just got. So it's a direct mount pickups on this one. Uh, I changed the knob. I, I took the telly knob off. I just have that on my other guitar too. Maple neck, aged, beat up, black on black. That's that's what I want right there. That's a cool um, one. That is gorgeous. Um, and that one just sort of like and, – and on this particular one too, it's got crazy like dark aging on the fretboard. Mm-hmm. Like the the wear marks, and I was just like, "Oh man, I think it was that." And my was my birthday. Actually, I was there at the at the shop, and I saw this guitar, and I'm just like, "Oh, uh, okay." I'm taking. I gotta it. I gotta have that. <laughs> so nice. My partner Rob in the business is even worse. He, he's he's done that so many times now. I'm like, "How many damn guitars do you have?" <laughs> 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 it's getting crazy. Yeah, um, eating eating uh, from the business, taking the good stuff. Oh, um, someone Bubba Fett goes. How can I get my hands on a Cali Green Mini? Uh, I don't know if there there were two made, and I'm not sure if they're both gone or not. Guitar Guru Network has uh, had those made, so yeah. Contact. I don't know if both are gone or not, but I'm sure he could order up another one. It might take a little while, but. Yeah, I, I, it was funny because uh, we on Facebook somebody was like, "Oh, that's so horrible! That's gross!" Blah blah blah. And then two minutes later, he wrote, "Sold." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like um, it's so much for that. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the same thing I said. You know, it, I just like when I saw, it, I was like, "Oh God, no!" I, oh man, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was very cool. So then. JMP twenty two oh four rocker. Uh, Dave, you said a while back when George Lynch was in your shop uh, that your favorite cab was the nineteen nineties reissue four by twelve with twenty five greenbacks. Not exactly. Uh, it's a um, a old seventies cabinet that used to belong to Stephen Stills that has no Tolex on it whatsoever. Mm. Uh, it's been shellacked over, so it's kind of brownish in color. It has checkerboard grill cloth on it, and it has 90s reissue 25 watt greenbacks in it. So that part's right. Uh, and why is that my favorite? It's really broken in. It's really kind of like dull on the top end. It's really nice and sweet on the top end. Uh, everyone loves that cabinet. Lynch has tried to buy, buy it off me a million times. I'm like, no. <laughs> Too bad. You got enough. Yeah. I, of course, there's probably a price for everything. <laughs> That's true, right? Of course. 
That's uh, true. Um, oh, here's one. Eddie Eddie Bauer said, Dave, can you tell the story of how you got involved a few years ago with a limited run of B modded Jet City 20 amps? Um, uh, I still do the mods. Um, so, yes, you can contact me. Um, although I don't do any mods really fast these days because um, of just the time is so slim. Um, so, you know, maybe after NAM I could do it. Um, how did I get involved? We were friends with Doug White, who was, um, who is still the owner of Jet City uh, Amplifiers. And they had this 20-watt platform, and I had modified a couple for some people. And um, he goes, let's offer them through the website. So we did, a, did some amps through them. Uh, at the time, and it, that's basically it. Simple. <laughs> so it's a good little uh, for for on a budget. You know, if you can get the amp for you know, pick up one of those amps for like two hundred dollars or something, and put a three hundred dollar mod on it, you have a five hundred dollar pretty good ass kicking be sounding amp. So it's cool. But again, I don't do very many of the mods still, but it, and I don't do it very fast, so. <laughs> don't don't be bombarding me with them. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Um, how long does it typically take for you to when you get a well, mod? Well, you know, it's not it's it's not that it takes that long to do the mod. It's it's really it's my the wait time list. and right. what. I'm, it's not even a wait list. It's 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 like if I have too many amps that have been sitting here already too long, I like stop taking amps in, and I go, I gotta, I I can't take anything else in until I finish what's here. Um, I, I'm just trying to be upfront about it. It's just that we get involved with production and 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 stuff in the amplifier line, and and time gets away from you, and you you just you just don't get it done, you know. Right, right. And then you don't want to have anybody upset, so. Yeah, so so you know, I try to be upfront about that as much as I can now. So. Uh, Connect Live says, Dave, what do you think about the tube store preferred series tubes, EL34, et cetera? Many people claim because they are hand-selected high-end Chinese tubes, they are among the very best out there. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're good. I mean, they're well-selected. They're, they're good. It doesn't mean necessarily that <clears throat> they're not going to fail or last long, longer or anything. It might be they're screened a little bit have more thoroughly but um i don't know on the chinese el34s let's say for instance uh they they can have issues no matter what no matter how you screen them and all of a sudden they'll just pop so um yeah i mean it's a good they do a good job let's put it there okay um okay, so Thrifty Flipside said he just sold his unmodded Jet City 20 amp. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, yeah. well, they're pretty easy to find and not the 20, not the 22 though, the 20. Um the 22 is a whole different like circuit and it's it's uh, more of a problem to do. Okay. Um, Dave, what is your opinion of Black Star amps, specifically the HT Studio 20? I have no experience with them almost at all, so I, I don't. Yeah, I've never heard that amp, so I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I've heard a couple that were cool. Yeah, um, I've heard them. So my cousin had one. He had the uh, the the uh, Black Star. I think it was the 60 watt or the 40. I can't remember. Um, it was a cool amp, sounded good, but I went and saw Ozzy, the real Ozzy, um, with uh, Gus G on guitar, yeah. mm -hmm. and he had the whole line of Black Star amps, and it was bad. <laughs> uh, it was not, I was like, oh man, because Slash had opened up for them, and Slash's tone just ate him for lunch. Ate it for lunch. It was just so night and day. So I wasn't thrilled with Black Star from that, but but the combos are nice. I think they're they're good value for the money. Um, Blues Len, I have a stupid question. Can a solid state amp be made with the 
made with the Freeman pedal sounds built in? Can a, like a little small like practice kind of amp is what you're saying? I guess so. Can a solid state amp be made with the Freeman pedal sounds built in? That's what he asks. Sure, it could be done. Um, that might be something that happens down the road. We'll see. Okay. Um, Jet City 20 Vintage or Jet City 20 Slow Style? Not Aaron the Crit. slow style. I don't. Uh, I don't know the latest version of it. A JCA twenty, but they're like. I don't know the latest offerings they have, so I couldn't answer that. But as long as it doesn't say twenty two, I think you're okay. Um, the twenty two is a slow style. I gotcha. Unless there's something new and I don't know about it, which I haven't really looked, so I don't don't quote me. Uh, okay, Dave, what did you carry on and off stage for Steve Stevens at Gear Fest on amp pedals? He sounded amazing, of course. Uh, his pedal board. Okay, that was from Cheddar Kung Pao. Yeah, his 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 his, uh, his pedal board. I just helped him get it off the stage because I think I was taking it or something with me or or it was shipping back with our gear, so I needed it. Okay. Ed Bauer, Dave, can you tell us about the 2x12 Freeman cab that is ported? Is it front firing port or near rear firing? I'm asking because I see a small opening on the lower rear of the cab. Thanks. Yes, it's so it's rear. If you saw it on the rear of the cab, then you answered your own question, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a rear uh, it's a rear small port like a slit. It's basically very similar to what used to be done on old high watt cabinets. Um, it just kind of lets a little little the air out, so it doesn't sound so congested. It sounds a little bit bigger. Okay, it's cool sounding. Making Tavares, Dave. Um, there's a typo. Um, your amp that you re really recommend for church use, like can take pedals extremely well and do worship music. Um, hmm. Well, if you're going to do a lot of pedals, you're going to want like some decent clean channel. So, um, you know, the, the, you know, on the lower end, of it, I mean the the Runt fifty would be good because it's got a great clean channel and takes pedals really well. Mm -hmm. And then you have a dirty channel that you can you know dial in for a dirty sound if that's what you're looking for. If that's not, if you're looking for a totally clean amp, I mean I think the one of the best pedal amps in the business really is the the Buxton Betty, which often gets overlooked in my line. It's a fantastic sounding uh, pedal platform amp. If you want to use all pedals into a totally clean platform, so okay, there's my answer. I mean, you can get away with a run twenty two. It's just kind of a limited clean channel, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just got the three switch, three toggle switch. Um, Malcolm Tavares, Dave of your. Oh no, he already asked that. Jim Becker, any chance of getting Bogner on the show? Um, yeah, there's a chance. Sure. We'll see in the future. Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Ice Coffee Tone said, did Bogner work for Cirque du Soleil before making amps? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, or, or yeah, or something, yeah. Or the circus, you know, you know, the, you know, he used to wear flat. The, the first day I saw him when he came in from Germany, he was wearing flowered pants. So, um, so this isn't something new. <laughs> <laughs> this is his style. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, Michelle R. That's not a really. You might be um, watching the wrong show. What kind of DJ? Mal Mal Malcolm Tavares. Dave is the new Les Paul style guitar. Will it have binding? Uh, it can have binding. Uh, some have binding. Some have neck binding. Some don't have neck binding. 
some will have a scraped uh, maple edge. Um, so it, it will be different for different looks and different styles. So, and of course, the, 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 I mean, the price varies a little bit depending on what binding options you get and stuff like that. Okay. Cool. That's that's good stuff. Um, Joe Suma and Joe is from uh, Greenwich Music in Greenwich, Connecticut. Guys, mm -hmm. check out check out his store. He's uh, checking into um, being a Friedman dealer, by the way. Um, Dave, any chance of doing a BE fifty combo? Uh, I, I've been asked that a bunch of times. I think I should do it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Yes, it, it, there is a chance. I'm just trying to keep it on a reasonable size. Um, it's, it'll be a little bit on, on the larger side. Um, I just got to come up with what works really well for it. So, yeah, maybe. Cool. Um, what do you think of the Wampler amp? Uh, Wampler amp sounds great. Um, uh, I was I was there when it was being tested and stuff, so I I I know it very well. So um, uh, it's a, it's a great Fender based sort of uh, clean platform with a cool like uh, like five position bright switch, five six position something like that. Yeah, Which five or six. We, we get different flavors and characters, with the, you know, that work well with different pedals. It's cool. And, yeah, and, and Brian Wampler's got, you know, he has his own ear, right? So yep. it's, uh, yep. it's a different. No, it's 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 a cool it's a cool amp. Yeah. Um, this is a cool comment, Ed Bauer. Great show. It's awesome how eager Dave is to answer these questions from people. So seems so genuine. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Uh, oh, someone asked, uh, Jim Beckers asked, uh, what do I use for pedal connections, cables, etc.? Well, we make all our custom stuff. So the ends I use are I, either there's these new square plug ends um, from this company in France that I use um, mostly now for angled ends. Um, there's also some really small little angled ends and straight ends I use from Providence uh, cable that I use um, a lot that are really well made. They're, they're kind of costly for the end user. Um, the cable mostly I use is a, this thin Providence cable that's made that's really quite good or I use a Megami 2319 or or the other one that number is escaping me at the moment that's another thin one 24 13 or, or something like that um, all those work well uh, eventually I'm going to have some cables available for for you guys um, that's a logical progression I guess that some cool they'll be they'll be high-end because I'm going to use like this the square plugs or, or, or the plugs I like and the cable I like, but there'll be a cool high end alternative to you know the standard stuff that you can buy. Would they be pre 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 made pre cut or yeah. you, uh, not the ones pre that you make yourself? No, pre cut different lengths. You know, same gotcha. same stuff that I would use on a board. Right. So you'd be able to buy that that stuff, and there'll also be some guitar cables down the line, but. I just haven't got around to doing it. There's a certain way I want to do them, and, and, and it's a super, super rugged way of doing things, very road-style uh, oriented with, you know, switching um, silent jacks and stuff on them. And so it's really it's stuff that I would make for, you know, touring guitar players and things. Right. Cool. Yeah. So um, I had a question for you. Eventually we'll have those. When when Pete did the uh, when you did the board for Pete and you had the labels on them, there was shrink wrap, clear shrink wrap on yeah. the ends. How did you do that with the shrink wrap gun? But clear, <laughs> where, where do you get clear shrink wrap? Uh, it was from Electronic Supplies. It's it's a it's a half inch uh, clear heat shrink, 
and you just you cut you buy links of it and you cut it to length the length you want and then you have to use a heat gun and it shrinks it right. down over the end nice yeah. okay all right yeah. yeah i was i was looking for that today i couldn't find it no i um I want to check maybe like you know a good good place to get a bunch of like supplies for wiring and thing is Redco. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a company called Redco um, that they they have a lot of wiring products and and things for DIY kind of people that want to make things. They cool. I think they have heat shrink that you can buy off them. If not, I can give you a link or something. All right, that's cool. That was that was a nice nice touch. Um, so Michelle R had a question about she wants to know. Just to know if a Gemini mixer would work with a preamp. Uh, what kind of DJ mixer should I get? She asked. I have no idea what if. I don't even know what you're really like. What what the application is exactly? Yeah. So Which, that's a tough one. Sorry. If you if you want to clarify, you know. Uh, yeah. Let us e know. E or, or email me at friedmanapps at, at gmail .com and you know I'll answer. Yeah, we'll clarify a little more. Love to help you out. Just not sure what you're asking. Um, Cubanock, in light of the new Synergy lineup preamp modules, how many more original preamps can there be? What major components create the difference? Can you read that one more time? Sorry. In light of the new Synergy line of preamp modules, how many more original preamps can there be? What major components create the difference? Well, there can be a lot more preamp modules. I mean, you know, you can do a, you know, a, an orange amp module, a Supro amp module. You can do different uh, circuits from from Tone King. You can do uh, well, Fryette has some coming. You know, um, you, you have um, I think Angle has some coming and. Uh, you know, maybe eventually you'll run out, but you can definitely do different takes on things and what components, you know, it's just really the circuit. Uh, so the circuit that they used in their amplifiers, the preamp circuit. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, you got... Um... Yeah. And then some, some like if you're going for more vintage style amps and you're trying to simulate that circuit, then you have to come up with a circuit that sort of simulates that, that, that old cranked up amp. Mm -hmm. Like a dumbbell Which, circuit, right? Well, I, well, that's coming. Actually, that's a there's a, a dumbbell style module coming that I that I heard the prototype for, and that's great. Sounds really good. Nice. Um, so, Ed Bauer said uh, uh, Friedman should do uh, iPhone cases that are black and have Friedman logos. Uh, I think there might be a Chinese company that makes some Friedman iPhone cases. Really, but. You know, now that you say that, um, we are totally capable of printing iPhone cases in our own shop. So uh, we have these UV printers that could, could if you, you have a plain black iPhone case, you could totally print. Um, yeah. Like a plastic style case, we could totally print uh, on it. That's uh, cool. Maybe, maybe I'll do some of those. It'd be fun. Um... Okay, let's see if the I'm starting to fade by the way so let's see how much longer we can go um, any plans for a free oh, come on mark come on You've been that's only I, that's true it's true any plans for a Freeman fly rig style pedal something like tech 21's fly rig Kotzen pedal but voice like Friedman plexi style amp um with all the delays and all the stuff in it, I'm not sure yet. Not not yet. Um, but uh, there might be some stuff coming. You'll see. Okay. Dave, any chance of doing a BE100 that has the features of the new BE50? Apologies if this has already been asked. John, Jimmy, Joe. Is They'll the they will there will eventually be a BE100 Deluxe. Um, um, but not yet and not for a while. So. Okay. JMP 2204 rocker. Are the days of tube amplifiers face, uh, fading due to profiling amps like Kemper and modules? I don't think so. Well, you know, 
Um, yeah, I think about that a lot, but then I find a lot of people that go that way wind up coming back to the tube amps. Mm -hmm. So um, there's just an immediacy and simplicity to it that that is is so much easier. Um, and a lot of people that wind up going down the the the, the modeling path wind up spending most of their time uh, tweaking the sounds and not playing the guitar. So, you know, um, not for our sales so far. So that's not, it's not really been a problem. I mean, RMG just wrote, uh, I, I went the Kemper route and came back. Nothing like an amp in the room. Nothing. Yep. Exactly. See? That's true. Well, that's true. It is very true. Um, Ice coffee tones, clear shrink is a great idea. It was as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Ooh, I like that." Um, what do you think of the Fryat Ether and putting the power supply and power amp in separate chassis? Dude, the Ether is an amazing sounding amp. First time I heard that amp, I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> <laughs> now I need one of these. Uh, uh, it's a really cool sounding amp. I know it's expensive and all that, but I spend a lot of time on that hand wired amp, and and I think it, you know, it it makes sense having the the power section in a separate box in a lot of ways, um, because there's less pr prone to tube rattle and stuff that's in the actual uh, combo case, um. But not to mention, it just has this cool retro look, and it just looks cool because it's got that little separate thing. It just looks so cool. <laughs> hmm. I've never played one before. Ah, oh, sounds amazing. Is it only does it only come in a combo, or is it a, a head? Yeah, tip? it's a combo. Um, it's it's like I it's it's kind of its own thing. It's got tremolo and verb that sound. The verb sounds amazing. So does the trem. It's 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 kind of it's got voxy characteristics to it, like a cranked up cool vox in some ways. Um, really cool sounding, mm. cool sounding amp. That I, I, that made me want one. And uh, the other amp that uh, that I've heard that I really love is the um, Todd Sharp amp, the the Jot J O A T Jot Twenty. Mm. I think the 20, 20 was the one I really liked. Uh, th those, man, that thing, that thing's got this reverb on it that's incredibly cool sounding. Um, again, these aren't high gain amps, but but just really cool vintage voice. Uh, mm -hmm. Crank it up and get some amazing, amazing sounding amps. Hmm. That's awesome. Two amps I never even heard of. Yeah. Todd Sharp, I, I've known Todd Sharp a long time. I used to do cart. Todd Sharp was a, a session, session musician um, when I was doing cartage. I did cartage for him um, when I was like young and 18 years old, you know. And, uh, and uh, he left LA. It's, he played, he's played with Rod Stewart in the past, and he's an amazing guitar player. And uh, he left L.A. and, and started uh, – he was always into amplifiers and stuff, like even servicing them. Eventually, he started a, a Nashville uh, to, uh, Nashville uh, Amp Service, I think it's called. And uh, they, they do servicing for all the Nashville guys. They're, they're the best amp people in town in Nashville. And um, so I'm glad to see he, you know, he did that and stuff. And we hooked up at an amp show an LA amp show a few years ago again. And, uh, and I heard his amps there and it was fantastic. So hmm. an expensive amp also, um, but uniquely cool. So. Yeah. Um, there was a question here. Uh, and now I lost it. Um, oh, well. Uh, George Metropolis says, watching the industry in flux and considering, considering how to navigate this mess going forward, thoughts on what he means? From Patrick Behar. I think he was pretty self-explanatory in what he 
what he meant. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like basically what we were saying is it's it's tough for small um, amp companies. It's it you know it's tough when when you're relying on um, for your income, relying on people ordering amplifiers. You know, and and you you don't have like distribution at stores, and you don't have a bunch of financial backing and 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 all that. It's very difficult to get your product out there for people um, to buy and hear. And uh, I've fortunately circumvented most of that by you know working with boutique amps. Um, so I mean, we we've had great distribution of our product, which is is um, is half the battle. You know, it, it's it's seen and heard and used. And but man, being you know, I, I I see people. Well, what if someone copies your amps and start make you know starts making them or something? And I'm like, uh, well, good luck, mm -hmm. because it's not it's not an easy business to be in making music uh, gear. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're like, like, you know, George was saying, it's, it's like rough, um, you know, well, one month he might sell, you know, a bunch of amps and then next month might be nothing. So, you know, you still have your expenses, <laughs> right. you still have your mortgage and you still have everything else. And it's, it's, it's not like, you know, um, no one's getting rich off of it. You know what I mean? It's not even, even, even on our level, we're not getting rich off of it. Um, mm -hmm. But on a smaller level, it's, it's really tough for a small business to, to, to compete, you know, and to, and to get their products out there. And, you know, you can't afford having more employees, but yet you need more employees. You know, you can't, and, it's a it's an ugly circle. Yeah. For any small business, I don't care what field you're in, you know. Yeah. You, know, you like I always say, so you're going to start a business, you better have capital because you need it and you need it liquid capital that you can float because you don't get all the money in at once, you know. And there's going to be downtime and slow and slow Yeah, there's going to be downtime, there's going to be all sorts of stuff, so. Yeah. You know? Um Jeff K, and this is kind of interesting because we I haven't talked to you about this since the last time we mentioned it. Dave, have you ever done any work with Neil Sean in your career? Um, not and as far as rigs go, but we've been talking about doing amp stuff. Um, um, so we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, Brett Harmon, where did you get the tabs that keep the cables uh, like on the pedal boards that you use for Pete Thorne, making uh, making it look like a mess of cables? He, where did you well, I mean, some of them come with our pedal boards, um, which those ones work pretty well. I use a different one that I get from a company called Pacific Radio out here. Um, I would have to look up the exact model. I don't have it handy. Um, if you feel free to email me and I'll give you the exact model. I'll do, and it's the best one I've ever used. So you want those. Um. Would I be missing much of a of the pink taco tone if I went with a paint a PT twenty with a ten inch speaker? I think it's called the mini. That's from RMG four seven one. Pink taco um, mini. What was the first part of this? He wants to know if I'll be missing pink taco tone if he goes with no. The mini. It's the same. It's the exact same amp. Mm -hmm. So uh, is the is the speaker smaller? Yes, the speaker is smaller, um, and that speaker is slightly on the dark side. Um, um, but it's the same exact amp chassis, so you know you can feel free to plug that combo into a bigger cabinet also if you want, or another cabinet. Mm. Um, so it, it's the same amp. That's cool. So hopefully that answers that. Yeah. Um... See, there was one other question that I, it's just, oh, uh, have you seen the new tape echo from T-Rex, the Binson Echo Rec 1? I've seen it. I, I haven't really played with it very much, but I've seen it, yeah. yeah. 
looks yep. interesting. Yeah, it looks cool. It's expensive though, from what I remember. Um, I think that's it. Mm. Any chance, uh, Heath Brinker said, is there any way, Dave, you'll come out with budget-friendly pedals like TC Electronic just came out with? Hmm. Oh, man. Um, who knows what the future... Uh, not not at this moment. Let's say that. Mm -hmm. But you never know what the future brings, you know. Someone wants to know Friedman impulses in the future. DJ Asterisk asks. Uh, possibility exists. Um, don't know as of yet. Okay. Um. Do you see any other questions that I've missed? I'm looking. Futures finish. Uh, why did we opt for the iced coffee tones? Why did I opt for a mix of vintage thirties and greenbacks in the four twelve? Um, well, you know, you know, here's how that came about. Years ago, um, um, in the early nineties, I did a rig for Jerry Cantrell um, for uh, a tour. And when we were sort of devising what he'd use for this rig, we had a, a, a one four by twelve that had finished thirties and one four by twelve that had greenbacks in our demo room. That, that when we were listening to stuff, and and he liked how that sounded, and it, it was a great blend. You know, you had the the vintage thirties blended with the greenbacks. It was a great sounding blend, and and that kind of stuck around um, for a long time. I always sort of liked the blend of the two. Um, so I decided to do that in the cabs because the vintage 30s sort of are, are bright, but they have a certain kind of um, punchy punchiness to them. Um, maybe harsh even, but there's a punchiness about the vintage 30, and then the greenback has this nice kind of papery, warm yet bright in a different way, kind of crisp, crunchy tone. So the, the two of them work quite well together, actually. They kind of complement each other. So that's why I, why I did that. Um, boy, this is a, Aaron, Aaron Cram is long. How, how, how would you differentiate between each of the hand-wired Friedman amps sound-wise? That's a long discussion. Um, I, I don't know if I can do all of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but feel free to email me and maybe I can answer it in a little more in depth. Um, the, uh, are yeah, Friedman amps doing well in Japan? Uh, yeah, we have a Japanese distributor in Japan. That's we, one place we do have a distributor and, uh, and they're doing pretty well for the Japanese market. The Japanese market is a little depressed at the moment, meaning not a lot of stuff is selling and it's kind of hard, but yeah, they're doing pretty well. Jamie Ray, love the show guys. Dave, have you ever worked with John Sykes? No, love to, but no, haven't. Okay. Uh, Ginger, not yet. Not yet. Ginger Bear, yeah. very informative show. Thank you guys. What about a show with Randall Smith of Mezoboogie? Greetings from the Czech Republic. Wow. Um, hmm. Randall Smith of Mezzabuggy. So wait, what was this? What about a show with Randall Smith of Mezzabuggy? Oh. Well, that would be interesting. Yeah. I haven't really thought about him. I, we, we, we could uh, we'd certainly look into that. That might be interesting. Um. Someone else says, Dab Bounce says, uh, any chance to have kit pieces to update my B100 in France? Uh, it's not fun, easy to find someone that can do mods. Uh, it depends on what you're talking about. Why don't you just email me exactly, and then we, we can discuss it. We do have uh, a few things that we can do as a kit that can you can update your amp. So... Um, just let me know specifically. It's a little more specifics than that with the email. 
Uh, Dave, will the future of pedal boards be wireless? I don't think so. There's already too many wireless networks. It's kind of becoming a problem. Mm. Um, oh, someone, uh, Stan Adams, was like, he'd love to see a BEOD pedal with a mid control. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see now, won't we? <laughs> uh, dab bounce. Any chance to have amps do it yourself? Like, we can choose what options we want buxom clean, HPE, channel, thump. Just choose parts on your site and do it myself. Uh, you gonna make it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? You, I'll, to some extent, you you can I can you can get me to do a custom shop amp um, where you could get what you want really uh, within reason. You have to ask me what it is first, and if that's really a doable option or not. But it, it's possible now, um, to some extent. I mean, there's some stuff that's just not doable. Um, it, it, that it's not realistic to do. Um, um, so email me, FriedmanApps at Gmail. Uh, get Greta Van Fleet on the show. That would be nice. Love to. Yeah. Uh, I might be able to do that, actually. Do it. Um, get it done. I live in Taiwan. How should I go about buying a Friedman guitar, chlorine bacon skin? Uh, oh boy! Um, double check our dealer base. Uh, uh, we might have someone near you, so uh, check on our website. And okay. then, if not, you might see if another store is willing to ship to you that does have stock. So there you go. All right, let's do a, one last question because I'm really fading and this has been three and three hours and 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> That's nothing, Mark. Come on. <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to make it a shorter one. Um, do cathode well, bias... Well, it, is and, shorter. It, it is shorter. You're right. It is shorter. Uh, do cathode bias amps generally have a warmer, darker tone? My PT20 is definitely warmer sounding than my 2204. Well, the, your, your PT20 is warmer for a reason. I, there's a cap in there that actually rolls off the top end pretty severely um, because the power section is no negative feedback, which is a brighter sort of power section. At times, I've think, thought about putting a switch on it that can vary that a little bit because at times I feel it's too dark. Um, but again, that depends on the guitars and what speaker you're playing it with. Because, um, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, and then... Uh, I've seen two suggestions. Oh, Eddie but... Bauer, uh, uh, how much Highland Park scotch will you be drinking on New Year's Eve? I don't think I'm drinking at all. <laughs> Still reeling from my stomach flu, um, and I wouldn't be drinking Highland Park Scotch. <laughs> I was, but because I got sick literally after I drank a bunch of Scotch, it's Scotch isn't sounding so good right now. <laughs> so maybe not any. Um, oh, I'm getting called a baby for wanting to go. Yeah, see. <laughs> My God. Uh, Dave, have you tried the Caitlin Bread Bell uh, Epoch Deluxe? I don't think the Deluxe. I think I've tried the other one, and it sounds cool. Um, uh, someone's saying they like the Run 50 and the Cab Sim. It's killer. It Plus, it cool. doesn't kill your CPU like ours. Uh, Jeff K., George Lynch on the show, a definite date or just a possibility? No, well, he said he's going to come on. We just no, have he's going to come date. on for sure. He said today, uh, and it, it, it's going to be in February. So, okay, cool. Or at least that's what we said today. You know, anything can change. Um, so, uh, Rick, someone suggested Rick St. Pierre to come on from Wizard. I think that actually would be a fun, a fun show. So maybe we could do that. 
and also Mike uh, Bendinelli from Mesa Boogie. That's a possibility too. Uh, Somebody asked, waiting for an alibi, will we see a synergy combo amp? I think there already is one, right? There, there, there will be, yeah, there, there is one, the 20, the 30 watt amp, but the, they're just starting to produce the 30 watt amp. So I don't think it's really seen the light of day yet. So, hmm. uh, someone wants what's to know my favorite you... guitar cable and speaker cable, mm. uh, from Brett Harmon. Uh, favorite guitar cable is uh, uh, an old cable that's been around for a million years since the 70s. Belden 9778 is my favorite guitar cable. Um, and speaker cable, there is another Belden speaker cable that's this gray color. And I can't remember the number. It's an 84-something. There's different gauges of it available. I, I, I really like how that stuff sounds. Um, that goes way back, though. I did those tests like way back when I was younger and more interested <laughs> um uh but yeah so if, if i if i make guitar cables it will be out of that cable and and done a different way so vintage 30 wants to know if we can get howard dumble to join oh that would be, that would be man that would be epically cool um is that possible? Hmm. Good question. I'm not saying it's not impossible, hmm. but uh, I, 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 uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Let's say that. Okay. What cable for pedal boards they want to know? Uh, I think I answered that already in the show somewhere. Uh, yeah. Um, get Brad Gillis. Yeah, he would be great. Oh, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Patrick uh, Barr said, uh, Oban scotch is good. It is good. <clears throat> Vinny Moretti, Mas Tequila. Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that tequila, by the way. <laughs> Any chance of getting Paul Rivera on, Ejar says. That would be a good one, too. Paul Rivera would be a good one and, and very possible to get him on. I don't, I don't think that would be a problem, actually. All right, here's a question. Fast Eddie VH. What is the craziest over the top rock star thing Dave ever witnessed? Um, man, really? Um, <laughs> you know, the probably the craziest thing that I've ever sort of been involved with was was the. Uh, if you guys remember, it's kind of a dark era, but. <laughs> If you guys remember that uh, Van Halen did a, did some music for a, a, a Catherine, you know, for a, a, a porn film. Yeah, an adult film. He yeah. did a couple songs. Do you remember that, Mark? I do. Uh, and and uh, you uh, talked and, about that party. Yeah, yeah. So the party, the party, party was the most epic Hollywood crazy rock star party ever. Um, so you know that was the opening party for the film. And it was at his at his house, and it was, um, you know, naked girls sliding down the pool, Cirque du Soleil performers hanging from trapezes upside down above a piano while Eddie's playing, uh, you know, uh, uh, open bars everywhere, alcohol flowing, hors d'oeuvres passed around all outside. This stuff was crazy. I mean, this is the, the the most epic party I've ever been to in my entire life, and uh, and also the most epic hangover I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I think I talked about that on one of our other shows. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, in in more detail. So go back and listen and try to find it. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember which show it was, but no, that's cool. Um, Need to make Friedman diapers for the marathon live streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, my God. No kidding, right? I know. I Actually, I need to make a pit stop if we're going to keep going. Um, uh, Bob Bradshaw on the show. Yeah, we talked about that. I'd actually like to have him on the show, uh, and I will reach out to him. Um, that would be good. Brett Harmon asked that. Um 
JMP2204 wants to know, what did you guys think of Randy Rose live tone? Uh, we talked about that earlier. I, I wasn't a fan. Um, I thought his playing was fantastic, but I just didn't. His tone could have been better, at least in my opinion. Oh, well, someone says I should try for Jakey e. Lee. Yeah, Jake, from what I understand, Jake's pretty private. So um, I, I highly doubt that would happen. Um, I haven't seen him do any interviews at all. I mean, no. Except and, for maybe uh, with Eddie Trunk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then the G Man Music Productions goes, which pancake ends for small pedal boards? I use these new ones from France called Square Plugs. They're they're fantastic. Yeah, they're those were like super low profile. Yeah, it's really cool. They're super cool. They're great, great plug. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else. Tom Anderson would be great on the show. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to Tom Anderson again. My cousin just ordered a guitar from him. Oh, he makes beautiful guitars. He does. Gorgeous stuff. You know, it's like... We I, were I a huge... I knew him back from when I worked at Making Music, and we were a huge, um, we were a huge Tom Anderson dealer. Hmm. Um, so um, I had several Tom Anderson guitars over the years, and uh, yeah, the green makes yeah. great stuff. It's very different, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, you people could look at Sir guitars and Anderson guitars and be like, oh, you know, they're very similar. They, they offer different things. They're very cool. Different guitars and. You know, there's everybody's got their own little niche. Hermes Costa says a Steve Stevens show. We already did that. <laughs> yes, we look, have done. Look that. back in our look back in our videos. We've done it already. Um, and, we, and we have Joe. We've done Joe Morgan in the show also. Oh, here's one, Jim Becker. Vito Brada would be cool, but unlikely. Yeah, no kidding. Really, not going to happen. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, Andy Timmons, Tom Schultz, and I would love to get Tom Schultz. Oh, on Tom the show. Schultz would be interesting. Joe okay. Morgan in the show. Yeah, we had Joe Morgan. He played video games through the show. <laughs> he got a lot of heat for that, by the way. Yeah, Greg Greg Koch would be an awesome guest. Uh, Greg Koch, actually. Yes, he would. I met Koch, him. At, Koch. I met him at Summer Nam. Really funny. I know guy. Greg. He he would do the show. He's great. He's awesome. That would be a great. He'd be really great to have on. Yeah, we, that's that's doable. We should reach out to him. Yeah, that's a good one. That's I don't think that's a problem. I'll see him in Nam. Okay. James uh, Tyler. James Tyler. Yeah, that would be awesome. James Tyler guitars. We probably could get James. Um, that's an option for sure. On uh, Neil Moser. Huh. Joe Bonamassa. We talked. We talked about Joe the other day. We talked about Joe. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Joe, so we're going to see about that. That might be an option, too. Neil Sean might be an option, as I see. I'm just not reading out your guys' names. I'm just kind of randomly answering questions quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Doug Rappaport would be a, a good one to get Oh, to. they were saying, the guy was saying when I talked about the party, it was the Steve Stevens show. Okay, well, good. Thank you. So if you want to hear about the party, watch the Steve Stevens show. Ah, okay, that's got it. Thank you. Ch uh, Cliff Chase from Fractal Audio, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Could you do a Steve Stevens oh. mod? Oh, good. Greg Koch and Phil X on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be interesting. Oh, man. Uh, oh, Zeke Wait. Clark, the tech, Eddie's old tech. Um, yeah, I don't even know where he is these days. Um, so who knows? Steve Lukather is coming Steve. on. Yeah, Steve Steve will be on eventually. Uh, Tosin, Tosin would be great. Yeah, we could probably do Tosin. He'd do it. Um, Doug Rappaport, I have plans for Doug. Andy Wood. Andy's possible too. Nice coffee tones. Jimmy Page, now that would be the best. That that would that would be it. I'm done then. Oh, that would be <laughs> yeah. Shows shows over, man. <laughs> <laughs> Broke the internet. Yep. Uh, Joe Holmes. I know Joe. Uh, Joe would be cool. Um, uh, 
and I could reach out to him. I'm not so sure he even has a computer to do it with, <laughs> though. <laughs> He's uh, kind of an anti-tech kind of sort of guy. Mm. Um, but maybe John Sir Part Three didn't two isn't two enough? <laughs> At least he, wait for a while. Yeah, I think we need to wait a little while. John, John, I think John wants to wait a little while. Um, oh, Jeff K. Did the guy asking about VOCs get back to you? He was talking about volatile organic compounds in the plastics. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that's what he was talking about, but it, but in the amp chassis i mean the only thing that's plastic on the amp is the panels um mm. other than that there's no plastic well other than the knobs and uh i could i could probably the material i could probably look up and find out but i'm not really sure so um okay michael anthony love to be a that'd be fun yeah I'd be able to get him. Get him. Um, I'd love to have him on. Steve, uh, yeah, Steve Lukather, yeah. <laughs> John Sir's dog for the whole show. <laughs> 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 I like it. That'd be funny. Uh, uh, um, Jimi Hendrix. I don't think that's going to happen. No, sorry. Um, Josh Heath Scott from JHS Pedals. Uh, that would be interesting, also. Hmm. Um, uh, someone asked about Matt Brock. We've asked Matt Brock. That's not going to happen. Yeah. No, he doesn't want to do it. So. A, Zach, no, no, Wild. No. Zach, Zach Wild could happen. Um, hmm. Zach Wild could happen. And that's a good idea, actually. Um, we might never get a word in edgewise with him, though. <laughs> No, I like really like he might oh, guys no. he might just talk the entire show. So um Mike Fuller, a full tone. Oh, that's but possible. That that would be good. That'd be good. I know him. I could probably reach out to him and ask. I don't know if he'll do it, but Yeah. That that should be good. He might be yelling at people in the chat, but <laughs> you know. G JT Hair One, could you do a Steve Stevens mod for a JCM eight hundred? Yeah, sure. I could. It's just a variation on a BE mod, so yeah, mm -hmm. it, it could be done. Victor Mason and Mojave amps, that's possible too. Yep. Mm. Randall Smith, we saw that. Mm -hmm. Dave, a good place huh. to sell sell, sell mustard some. caps, eBay, yeah. Yeah. Um, or maybe like on one of the amp forms or something that does that. Maybe Metropolis Forum or um, something like that. Oh, these we get some good, you know, guys. Thanks for all these good ideas. Brad Whitford, that would be great. Derek St. Holmes would be great. Ty Tabor would be great. Buckethead. Buckethead, that'd be interesting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, we were talking Jerry, about Jerry. We talked about Jerry. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Jesse Oliver of Ampeg fame. That would have been good, but. Huh. Uh, great start to 2018. Um, I think we're yeah. done. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Cantrell would be killer. Yeah, I'd love to have Jerry Cantrell on the show. So, um, and Dweezil, Dweezil's great. Ian Thornley. Yes, Tom, yeah, Tom Anderson. We already touched on. Yep. Yeah, um, Ian Thornley would be great. You know, I can always reach out to uh, Aspen John. Pittman. Oh, interesting. That's a name I don't know. Groove Tubes, formerly um, Groove Tubes. Rafael, Rafael Moreira. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. That's not that hard. Ted Nugent would be super interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass on that one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> the multi-guest shows are good, too. Yeah, of course, we can do that. Um, yeah. I'd love to have Billy Gibbons. Oh, that would be amazing. That, that would be like... Top I can tier. ask him. It would be top tier, for sure. I can ask him. He's, he's such a great guy. He's a cool... Cool, totally cool. 
cool guy. But yeah, totally laid cool. back. Uh oh, maybe the dude with the big mustache. <laughs> uh, Mark Tremonti would be good. Miles Rose would be good for tube info. Yep. Miles is a cool guy. Troy Van Luden, another guy I know and have done work for. Um, in Queens. Yeah, Billy Gibbons would be right up there with Jimmy Page. I think we should have Billy Gibbons and Jimmy Page at the same time. Why not go for broke? <laughs> I think we would break the internet that night. That would, yeah, that would um, be epic. Andy Fuchs, that's a possibility. Richie Kotzen is a possibility. Billy Howardell is highly gonna ha probably going to happen. Um, I don't know Billy Howardell. Where is he from? I do. Perfect Circle. Oh, okay. User of my amps, naked amps, custom naked amps that I made him years ago. Mm. In fact, I have one sitting next to me right now from him. Um, Bill Kelleher, yeah, that's totally possible. Warren D. Martini would love to. Adrian Vandenberg is maybe possible. Yeah. Paul Gilbert. Yeah. Philip Sace. That's possible too. God, he's good. Paul Reed Smith. I'll talk Paul to him. Paul Reed in, Smith. Maybe. I'll see him at NAM. See if I can give him a card and talk to him. Um, I'm just seeing what you guys are coming up with. You know Betancourt <laughs> and Paul Gilbert. Steve Morse. I, I love Nuno Betancourt. I'd love to have him on. He's awesome. Yeah, I don't really. I don't. I, I, I've never been an overwhelming fan, but I, he's he's good. It's not really my thing. No, it's not my thing either. But just really, Joey Brasler. Yeah, that would be interesting. Actually, Joey's from Fender and a previous a bunch of previous other companies, and also a great guitar player. Hmm. Uh, Jason Lawler um, would be cool. Good pickup. Satchel. Yeah. Satchel would be interesting. <laughs> oh, and, and Rebea. I like Rebea. Um, he's a great player. Yeah. Gary he's Hoey. Great. I know Gary from years ago. Yeah. Um, Gary, Gary's cool. Sterling Ball. These are all good, good lists here. How about Slash? <laughs> oh my God, I'd love to have that. Would be a. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, no. yeah, you know, you never know. Do you know uh, much about someone the, his... do, Yeah, the Slash Thirty Nine amp. Do I know much about that? Yeah, I worked on it a bunch of times. Wait, no, Thirty Nine. Okay, that's the original, original one, correct? I worked on his. He has a number Thirty Four amp mm. that I've worked on a bunch of times. Um, I, yeah, I know. I mean, it's pretty public knowledge. In fact, there's a there's a whole thread on on I think Metro uh, the Metro Forum out there uh, uh, that's maybe like some crazy number of pages now, like a uh, couple hundred pages or something, all about this the slash S I R M. So if you really want inf it, detailed info, go there. Okay. Uh, Lindy Fralin, that would be a good one too. That would be a good one. He makes great I stuff. I almost consider Lindy Fralin to be the one of the first. I mean, after of course there was you know Seymour Duncan and Demarzio, right? But then, but then you know when Lindy Fralin came out, he was one of sort of the first small boutique uh, vintage style winders that 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 came about. Mm -hmm. And um, and he and he was he makes great sounding pickups. It's nothing nothing bad to say about his pickups. No, he makes great stuff. You know, there's another another name that popped in my head just now is uh, Roger Mayer. Yeah, that'd be interesting too. Yeah, Steve Vai, Scott Gorham, Joe Walsh, <laughs> Tor from TC, mm -hmm. Robert Keeley, Robert Keeley. Totally doable. In fact, yeah. he'd be a good guy to come on. Um, yeah, I know Robert. Joe Nags. Joe Nags, sure, that's a possibility too. Elliot Eastman. You know, I was friends with him on Facebook, and he uh, he did a clean house and got rid of me. So, oh well, fellow lefty. 
Uh, Miles Rose. Miles Rose, yeah. Hmm. You guys have good uh, good suggestions, and you know we'll try to remember them all. But you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, any good Slash stories? You ever work with Slash? Yeah, no, I did multiple rigs for Slash, including the one he's touring with right now. Oh wow! Um, and that was in the rig run through, but they never mentioned my name. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> <Dan>. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that would, uh, uh, yeah, I've done lots of stuff for slash amp work, uh, rig, bunch of rigs, bunch of stuff. Super cool. Joe Naylor. Now that would be an interesting one too. Um, Rick Emmett. Oh, interesting. It's funny. Yeah. I just saw a clip of Rick Emmett playing a, a acoustic thing. I guess he's doing some sort of acoustic dates and stuff. It sounded great. Actually, I forgot. <laughs> He still sounds great. Um, Doug Aldrich would be good. And then we talked about Dean and Rob DeLeo. I can do Doug Aldrich. That's That shouldn't be a problem. Oh, get him. He's great. I got his number. Um, someone mentioned Brad Paisley. Oh, Ed, Eddie said my name in the Musician's Friend interview. Oh, that's cool. Oh, he's talking about Van, Eddie Van Halen. He yeah. did. Oh, cool. Remember I sent you the link? Oh. You don't remember that? I Maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's, he said, he said um, something along the lines of Dave Freeman builds all my rigs for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember the link now. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cliff Chase and Chris, Christoph Kemper. Hmm. hmm. What Friedman amp would you recommend for home playing? Music style includes Hendrick, Foo Fighters, ACDC, Brattles, 44 wants to know. Um, well, it depends on how, you know. Uh, I mean, the small, the small amps are cool. It depends on what, what home playing. I, I, people use B100s in their room, like Mark. Yeah. So uh, it just depends on kind of what you want to spend, how many channels you kind of need or want, or maybe you just want one. If you want one, you know, there's the small 20 watt, there's three different 20 watt varieties that we have. So email me if you want more info. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dave Grohl would be amazing. Yeah. What well, can you probably Chris do, Chris Shiflet? I'd love to have him on. That would be big, great. Um, big fan, big fan of him. Basically, so we have guests from here to the eternity, essentially. Yeah. At this point, David Bray would be good. I, I think mm -hmm. to have David on. Um, B fifty have a good platform for pedals. So B fifty on the clean channel is an excellent platform because um, it's the uh, Buxom Betty clean channel. So, which is a great platform for sure. Okay, well, I think Justin we're done. Derrico, yeah, that would Justin is a possibility too, of course. Mm -hmm. I think we're done, guys. All right. Well, this is our last show for the year, so our next show will be, I think, January twelfth. Right? Is that what we were saying? Yes, I think that's what we're. No, wait. Yes. January twelfth. Yep. That's yep. what we're looking at, and. Um, and then from there, we'll be at NAM, which someone had asked, when is NAM? NAM is January 24th through the 28th. Correct. So, and that's where we'll, we'll be, and then we'll come back after that. So, um, I wish you guys a happy new year. Thank you for everybody who's been tuning into the shows all, all year round. You guys are awesome. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. And... Um, don't forget, we also have a podcast on iTunes. If you don't want to listen to the or watch the, the YouTube channel, search iTunes for Tone Talk, uh, Tone Dash Talk, and um, or Tone Talk, it'll come up. Okay, and uh, Happy New Year, everybody! Happy holidays, and thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Good night and Good night. Uh, enjoy the weekend.